since Richmond's round one match against Fremantle, the Tigers have been hard hit by injury. Gone, a skipper Tony Free with a knee reconstruction. Stuart Wheatley with a broken ankle. Michael Gale with a broken collarbone. Stuart Maxfield with a broken jaw. Matthew Richardson with a knee reconstruction. And add to that the loss of Scott Turner, out suspended. In many respects, it has been a black season. The famous Tiger fighting spirit has never been better. It has been a remarkable debut for Fremantle. 23 first-year players have worn the Dockers' colours. Their fighting spirit has been tested every week. From Subiaco, Fremantle and Richmond on AFL Sunday. Yes, good afternoon everyone from Subiaco. Round 16 continues and this afternoon here it's Fremantle playing host to Richmond. The two sides met in the first round of the year. The Tigers looked home and hosed at three quarter time but Fremantle came back and they only went down by five points in a thriller at the MCG. And this afternoon they meet once more. Fremantle looking to bounce back. They've lost their last five games and as you saw in our opening titles, Richmond hard hit by injuries and looking to get something out of the West, which has for them been a rarity in seasons past. Don Scott, when they tackled the West Coast Eagles. Yes, uh, but it's a different, as we mentioned earlier, Peter, a different uh, Richmond side and um, I'm very impressed with them this year. Well, home side, home ground advantage, Fremantle, judging by their previous result, you'd have to give Freo a little bit of a chance, surely. Well, maybe, but I'm still, I, I won't be swayed off Richmond because, um, you know, they're just, the players that we saw in the, uh, in the opener that have gone out, but they've replaced them and uh, they're just playing with so much spirit and they are up there in second position and they want to retain that position and they know what winning's about now. Well, speaking of second position, let's check the ladder. After that Brisbane Hawthorne amazing result, probably if we look outside the eight initially, Hawthorne may have really run their race. And Collingwood, if the Magpies can get up today, it's going to make it very difficult for the Hawks and also Adelaide to try to get back in. But moving up further, Richmond 11-3 at the moment. They wouldn't want to drop this one, even though they might have a lead at three-quarter time like they did before in round one. They'll be going really hard at the footy for four quarters here this afternoon. Fremantle, as I said, they've certainly had a run of outs in the last few weeks. Five and ten at the moment, and they would love to break that drought here at Subiaco this afternoon. The 1995 AFL Premiership season. Brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors Australia. Qantas, McDonald's, Mobile, Carlton Draft and National Australia Bank. Well, we mentioned round one, Don, and I think it might be an opportune time to just take a little bit of a look at what happened in Fremantle's uh, first outing in the AFL. And as I said, the Tigers looked pretty good for three quarters, but Frio, to their credit, they really didn't throw in the sponge and they threw everything at the Tigers in the last quarter. I think it was more Richmond's uh, complacency, Peter. Um, Maybe a bit they, of that too. Well, they expected and everybody didn't. Well, they underestimated the Dockers early on and Richmond did relax, I believe, in that game. There were certainties to win it, but uh, as they found out in the early part of the season, as you can see there, they only just scraped home by five points and a lot of teams underestimated Fremantle early on in the season. But now, with injuries, a lack of strength, physical strength in the side and a lack of quality players, now Fremantle are really finding it hard as you get into the grinding end of this season. Groom and Ridley got three goals that day for Fremantle. They kicked five in the last quarter as they make their entrance on the Subiaco this afternoon. And Daffy was the leading goal kicker for the Tigers in that closely fought five point win. So ideal conditions for footy here this afternoon, there's a little bit of overcast but the ground after some rain during the week has once again come up absolutely 100%. So conditions I would say ideal for football, just looking out onto the ground now as the Fremantle side does a few preliminaries. There's not too much breeze to speak of, the curtain raiser game here we had was played in uh, pretty good conditions as well and the crowd really got involved in that. So uh, I think we're going to be in for a beauty here this afternoon between Richmond and the Dockers. We'll take a break from Subiaco, back after this. Tackling every facet of football. Join Bruce and the boys, Monday nights for Talking Footy.
Welcome back to Subi Echo. Fremantle Dock is going through a few more preliminaries. Number 34 is Jeff White. We'll share the rucking this afternoon with Jay Burton, one of the uh, debutants in the side, or the debutant in the side this afternoon. Don Scott, let's look at their lineup. Yes, Peter, and unfortunately, out of the paper side, McGovern and Parker have been omitted. They're late withdrawals, and unfortunately for Burroughs, Mildenhall, Leach, who have been contributors this year, they're not playing. They played last week in Burton, as we mentioned, and Wills have been omitted. And uh, it's a good, not a bad side on paper, uh, performed creditably earlier in the year and uh, last week, number eight there, McManus was a terrific player. He yes, played centre and he played up forward line and he kicked goals. Kicked four of them actually. And here he is, number eight. And uh, he was a bit of a problem for the Hawthorne side. It was interesting talking to Paul Deere, he said he's very, very strong over overhead. O'Reilly. Will he get the young sensation from Richmond at fullback? He's been playing down on the forward line, he's been playing cross half back. He started as and made his name as a backman. I wonder if he picks him up today. And Callahan has been in terrific form. Picked up a lot of possession, started in the forward pocket, into the centre last week. Played a little wide of Jarman, but he was a great contributor for the Dockers last week. There's O'Reilly, number 10. He's got a body and he's got strength. He's one of the only ones, and man, he's got a body. I'm and glad he's got a body, well. Donnie. Well, like I mean a body, a body, I mean a mature body, uh, Peter. Let's check the Richmond lineup now. Peter McKenna's already gone down there to check on who's playing and who's not. Not a bad side in view of all the injuries which we've already spoken about. We have, Peter, and it's bad Bad luck we haven't seen, Ga we've not seen Gale out there. That's Michael Gale and Maxfield, both injured. And uh, also, coming into this side is Knights. Now Knights number 33 around across midfield. They have gained a little bit there and uh, a lot of games are won around midfield and they are one in this side. They've got a very good midfield. Broderick picks up a lot of possessions. He's starting now to kick the ball more than handball it. Originally from the Fitzroy pub and here is this young sensation down on that forward line. Unbelievable body strength and coming home he didn't play a senior game over here in the West. He played all his junior football for South Fremantle. Never made his debut as a senior, but he will have a terrific battle if he goes against O'Reilly because they're both very strong physically. And here come the Tigers now. Stephen Jurica has been practicing. He's kicking. He's uh, there was one facet of his game that let him down in his first match, but kicked fired last week. And I think the Tigers are going to give a very good account of themselves this afternoon. I hope he does line up on O'Reilly because that could shape up as one of the battles of the afternoon. We'll take a break from Subiaco Oval and we'll be back with the bounce after this. The fight for the finals is getting tough. North Melbourne and the Demons pull the gloves on for Friday night football.
and welcome back to Subiaco. Looks as though we're just going to have the toss out there now, so we might wait for that before we go down to Dwayne Lamb on the boundary. Take the opportunity to say good afternoon to Peter McKenna. Good afternoon, Pete. Good afternoon, uh, Donald. Yes, and it is a good afternoon here. Typical Western Australian weather. Winter weather, it's beautiful, Peter. It is certainly, and uh, this ground is in magnificent condition again. Subiaco, one of the best uh, grounds in the competition. It is, and speaking of grounds, as Ben Allen wins the toss, let's go down to Dwayne Lamb. Good afternoon, Fatty. Pete, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day down here. The ground is in superb condition. There's uh, a light northwester blowing, but I don't think it's going to play much part at all in the, the uh, course of the game. Just a little piece from the, uh, the Docker situation. They, uh, I think they'll give a bit of cheek today. Gerard has basically said to them, let's relax. The eight's out of the question now and uh, enjoy our football and we'll have a look at a few new guys. Well, speaking of new guys, now you've got somebody down there with you as I get the selection from you. Yeah, well, my tip obviously is I think Richmond are going to be too strong overall, but I've got a little mate down here, Sam Roberts. Sammy, who's going to win today? Dockers! <laughs> he's pretty, he's pretty, pretty confident, mate. <laughs> Boy Soprano from way back. You were one of those once, Pete, weren't you? <laughs> Many long years ago and I lost it quickly. But uh, I've had a bit of mail that... Uh, the coach, Jared Neesham, hasn't been too happy that the fact that Dockers have not been running and bouncing enough. Remember early in the year, yes. they're bouncing the ball a lot. They haven't had as many bounces, and that's an unusual comment, isn't it? And uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they back themselves in today, Don, and run with the ball a lot more and bounce it and back themselves. Yes, well, it's, it's a good ground to do that on, Peter, but uh, a lot of these were the Victorian teams realise you've just got to beat them at the ball, put the pressure on. And that brings the Dockers undone. So I'm just watching the Richmond side warming up. They were very, very sharp. And uh, they'll be certainly on their job today. Well, they're a good side. A lot of people have underestimated uh, Richmond. They've been waiting for them to fail. And they haven't failed. They're still up there. And they're a very, very good side. Despite the fact they've a number of top players out. It's remarkable that they've been able to cover them as well as they have. First quarter from Subiaco. Fremantle going to the right of screen, the sun comes out, ideal conditions for footy. White goes up high, couldn't get an effective tap out. Bauer tackled from the heart behind by Retzlaff, ball jarred loose in the tackle. They'll try to go off the ground, Norris goes in very solidly for the footy. It's going to be a free kick to Matthew Knights. A welcome re-inclusion into the Tiger side today. He'll give some great drive from midfield, as this guy usually does, Broderick. Down towards Jurika, couldn't take the mark. Ridley's down there and the ball slapped over the boundary line. He moves very well, Peter. Jurika, just watching him in front of O'Reilly then. He's not cumbersome, he's very strong. And you can see there the strength, not the strength, but the physique that that man has. Number 23 on screen, going against White. Expected top of 19 degrees, currently 17, and as I said earlier, a pretty good day for footy. That could arguably be in the back. Umpire lets it go. Waters! <laughs> it's interesting that both sides lined up with a six-man forward line. Usually they might play a four-man forward line, but both sides lining up with six forwards in each end of the square. A long uh, rushed behind from Scotty Waters. Back into the side today, and O'Reilly will bring the ball back yes, in. Yes, I'm looking forward to this clash. Stephen O'Reilly, one of the better fullbacks in the competition against Stephen Jurika, an up-and-comer. Now O'Reilly kicks it long. Campbell sets himself in front. Oh, big fly over the back for Fremantle was Jeff White, the boy from the under-18 competition. Here's Scotty Waters back in the side, and he yep. tried to bring it around the boundary line, and it did roll over the boundary line. So, Waters... Very important player to Fremantle. The ball almost on centre wing. Jeff White versus Greg Deere. Deere's been a very valuable player for Richmond since coming across from the Hawks. Now here's Jason Norris, the former Demon. Handball to himself and said, thank you very much. Brings it down to the half forward line. It clears the pack. A chance for Hutton. Hutton gets it to McManus. McManus an open goal. Oh. And he's missed an absolute sitter, Sean McManus. A bad start to the Dockers. He should have snaffled that one, Don. Well, four goals, two last week. He was an excellent player for the Dockers against Hawthorne at Waverley. Yes, he might rue that miss later in the afternoon. Kick out comes to half back. Oh, a good solid bump by Broderick. Perfect hip and shoulder. Man comes in to remonstrate down there with Paul Bullis. The throw in will take place. 70 metres from goal. 
Knocked down towards Callahan, and there's been a whistle on play. Shown some pretty good form. Young Craig Callahan to make the United has the footy. Something happening off the ball that I didn't see. Knights kick number two. And up towards centre wing, it's a juggle. And in front of Ridley, Deer has taken the mark. Formerly of Hawthorne. His brother in action today at the Gabba. Kicked away by Mark Neald. Neald's kick up towards where Gale has taken the mark. Turns. Kick up towards right forward pocket. Jerika leads out. Bounce certainly affected. Tawny tried to go off the ground. Now the Dockers are going to run it out. That famous running game. A real chance out there at half back for Callahan. Dirty Harry, he could be called. Callahan's kick up towards left half forward. No mark taken down there by Prescott. Rogers comes in to give him assistance. And the umpire says throw it in. 50 metres from goal. 17 and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Bullis with man. Bullis wins it. Gets ridden into the ground by Durke. And it's going to be a stalemate. Is a stalemate. The umpire will bounce it right on the 50 metre line. So the Dockers half forward area, man versus Bullis. It's tapped down by Bullis. Here's McManus racing up. He's bumped off the ball. Prescott caught all the Dockers going in very hard here. And just early in the piece, it looks as though we're in for a bit of a contest. Well, Tom. I'm just uh, impressed with the way that the Richmond guys are putting themselves in and really bumping hard when the opportunity presents itself. Broderick on the opposite flank to where play was now. He was a, uh, an example, a prime example. We just saw another one on that outer flank. Well, that was Broderick. That was Ben Allen getting it down there, taken by Bullis to the centre of the ground, punched away by Ridley. Ridley lays a tackle. And the umpire calling play on Neil was there. Quick kick is by Brendan Gale out towards centre wing. Chris Nash playing his 100th game. He's there. Now here's Jason Norris. He goes inside to Ben Allen. Allen looking for someone to give it to. Back onto the left. He should have bombed it long down to the goal square. That's what he should have done. But a free kick to the Dockers in the meantime out at half court. It's going to Peter Mann. A nice kick into the pocket or clear the pack maybe here. Yes. Racing in and taking it through as Callaway for a behind and he's paying a push in the back actually so it'll be no score and it will be a free kick to Duncan Callaway Duncan Callaway who was third in the Richmond Best and Fairest last year he's fixing up his boot too Pete a great season probably one of the most improved players in the club as he approaches his 50th game some quick matchups Knights is going with Alan Callahan's going with Broderick Callaway, as we see there, is picking up Hutton. Bullis, good mark, almost uncontested. White court, well out of position. Kicks to centre wing. One on one contest. Oh, great mark, Ridley. What a grab. Former bomber. Terrific mark taken by Ridley. Oh, gee, it's having some grabs here. Bullis. Gee, there could have been a free kick to Hutton, too. Oh, he staged it. Don, turn it up. Gale, who can take a mark, out at the back of the pack, taken out of the contest by Bond, throw in centre wing next to the interchange gates. Let's take a look at that Ridley mark again. What a beauty it was, right up onto the shoulders, terrific grab. Played in Essendon's Foster's Cup Premiership side of 1993. Deer, a little gift to Broderick, Waters won't catch him. Squares the ball out in front of goal. Tawny a chance if he can get the good bounce he wants. He does. Gilbert into his back. Umpire says tackle okay. Gilbert unloads with a long hand pass. Put his teammate under a little bit of pressure down there. Marillo. They might be able to mop up, kick it. Good hand pass. Norrish. A couple of bounces at left centre wing. Just gets his kick in up towards. Pushing mm -hmm. the back. But at least the pressure is there by Richmond. And after a while, if they continue this... The Dockers will be starting to think they're going to be tackled and consequently they'll start spraying their kicks. Norrish around Campbell, Hutton, couldn't complete the mark, got a couple of claws to it. Very scrambly down there on the forward line, here's a chance for Durke, into an open goal and kicks it! Well the umpire certainly did let, let that passage of play go, it was very very scrambly. It was just a matter of luck that it came Durke's way. Unfortunately enough for him, he was on the right-hand side of the pack. 
Here it is, a scram scrappy bit of play. Ball down, umpire letting it go. You see Hutton coming over the top. Nobody really being able to control it until Durke, the first goal. The Dockers by six points as Deer gets it to Knights. Beautiful play. Out here towards Neil. Neil surrounded by Dockers, but he gets in a hand pass to Chris Bond. Bond bombs it in towards full forward. Over the back is Morello. Oh, good play to tap it back to O'Reilly. Excellent team play. Out wide is Callahan racing after it. But it'll beat him to the line. And uh, Richmond's half forward here. And already you can see signs. I said I had a bit of mail at... Uh, the coach wanted them to bounce it a lot more and they're certainly doing that the Dockers the Fremantle side six to four Richmond two to one on so Richmond hot favorites here's Jeff White with a big uh, fly Callahan is a good player on the left gets it down the man who's doing well early in the piece Scotty Waters on the left brings it back towards half forward Prescott caught loses it McManus playing in front Number 12 you see there is Brendan Retzlaff, the former Brisbane Bear. Oh, man, went in very, very hard. Well played. Back to Retzlaff. Retzlaff on the right boot, bombs it in the woods, full forward. Some pushing and shoving going on. Well done. It's thumped away by Bullis. Taken by Ben Allen, the former Hawk. He runs into a teammate, loses the ball in the tackle, and the umpire will bounce. It's pretty hot out there. A lot of pressure. Some good players. A good punch away. Then by Tate. Bad luck there for Ben Allen, as you said, Pete, running into a teammate. There was just no room. So, throw up. Knights, a little give intended for Bauer. Went the wrong way. Now Nash. Bauer's kick wobbles off the boot, up towards centre wing. No mark taken. Madigan. Ten metre hand pass. Finds his teammate down there in Callahan onto Ben Allen. The skipper's kick, well inside 50. Two on two contest in the marking division. All little throw by Nash gets it out to Rogers. And Rogers with the clearing kick across his body. Bounce, a couple of bounces. Will it go out and won't? And Waters, has he kept it in? No! I don't know whether Scotty Waters went as hard as what he could have for that ball. Might have thought it was going out anyway. Don, it did stop, didn't it? So the Dockers leading by six points. That's the one goal kicked by Gary Durke. White and Deer, or Bolloed by Deer, straight to Norrish, sits nicely for him, centering kick by the former Demon, and the mark is taken by Callahan at midfield. Doing well, Pete. He is, I've seen him a couple of times, he does look the goods. Allen, keen to do well, he was dragged last week against Hawthorne. Hutton, that's a great lead, terrific kick. Gee, that's the old daisy cutter, Donald. Yes, I'm shaking my head in admiration. That was a fantastic piece of play from Allen. Now Knights, who is not renowned for the defensive side of his game, will really have to tighten up and not allow that to happen. John Hutton, 11 games this year for a return of 26-26. So I suppose you'd say he's even money to kick this. 48 metres out. And what's he done with it? I think he's missed... And she's kicked poorly this year, Pete. One behind, kicked by John Hutton. He well, was a very good kick when he was at the Bears. He kicked them from 55 and 60 metres out at times. One, two to one behind. Well, Wayne Campbell bringing it back to Bullis. Here's Peter Mann doing well. Gets onto the right, hooks it back. Campbell waits underneath. Sean McManus. Oh, great mark, McManus. Bring it, Mark. He beat two of them. Oh, he's not oh. paying it. Is he paying it to Richmond? Oh, gee. Oh, I thought McManus had it. Here's the replay. It's a beautiful kick from... Well, maybe. Man. Let's it have a look. great play. Oh, maybe. Oh. Look. Maybe he could know. have tossed that one up. Well, I think it would be a ball up in the... At least, wouldn't it? Here's Mann. Peter Mann bombs away at goal and kicks a point. I don't know whether he pinched it out of the hands of the crowd of booing out of the hands of Campbell, but it certainly looked McManus to me. Well, I, I think your call of a ball up might have been a good decision. Another look at it. Well, they both had their hands on it. Maybe he did pinch it anyway. The oh, umpire's closer. It's history now. Bullis. Cam Campbell didn't argue, did he? No, he didn't. Bullis's kick from what looked like a mark. Oh, no, it's great skills. Tawny 
that left centre wing. There's a very open forward line down there for the Tigers. Kick it. Good use for the body. Callahan again. In front of Broderick. Lobs it over his head up towards midfield. Nash late on the scene. Norris. Hutton didn't judge that at all well. Prescott under pressure. McManus applies a tackle and the crowd looks for holding the ball. They're still hot under the collar after McManus was not paid that mark. He kicked four last week against Hawthorne, 4-2, and that would have been a great chance for his first this White's, afternoon. White's going off, they're changing their rucks off the bench for him, Andal, and Burton's coming on. He's number 27. Dundas to Deer. Deer's kick up the centre wing. Ridley paddles in front. Off the ground he goes. That's where he took that great mark a few minutes back. Deer again off the ground. Oh, he loops after it. Ah, oh, Harry Madden. And again he goes off the ground. <laughs> I bet he's glad it's gone out of bounds. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Good play by Greg Deer. That then. was. You take a rest now. The runner will come out with a water bottle. Fremantle leading 1-3 to 1 behind. So it's uh, half forward for the Tigers. Neil has the ball held to him. Over the back is Callahan, who has been excellent. He's running and having a bounce. You can see they're backing themselves in here. Marillo, he's looking for the handball. Jeez, he has run. a bounce as well. So Marillo onto the left. But he's kicked it straight to Jamie Tape, who races after it. And lets it roll over the line. Half forward down the Fremantle scoring in. They lead by eight points, the Dockers. And Richmond, look as though they're in for a pretty tough contest. Here's Sean McManus, the ball held to him, and the umpire will come in and sensibly bounce the ball. About halfway through the first quarter here at Subiaco. Only one goal scored so far. Broderick, not a bad kick distance-wise. Well, oh, is that 50? Oh, gee, I'll tell you what I've seen worse. Well, he didn't really look better where he was putting that ball, Broderick. He just put it long and high and he was hoping and this guy's having a great game Callahan he's already had six kicks and three marks Durke has kicked one from the boundary the mark right in front taken by Chris Brew great skills from Gary Durke perfect positioning he scored their first goal and he's going to have a hand in their second Groom, who got three when these two sides first met, kicks his first today. So a good start by the Dockers. They lead 2-3 to 1 behind. And the physio, or is it the club doctor, has gone out to uh, Brendan Gale. It seems to be all right. The hand's gone up. But this excellent kick here from Durke. And Groom coming into this side has given them something or somebody big enough to kick to down on the forward line. That's his first goal, and the Dockers in control. 14 points, Fremantle lead. Well, we got the mail that they'd be pretty fired up. We we'll certainly look at the Tigers down by 14. Let's see what they can do. They're a good side, Richmond. And it goes Fremantle's way again. Norris latches onto it. Here's Gary Durke, swings onto the right and bombs it long into the danger area. But he's missed, he's kicked it behind. And the Dockers increased their lead. And they're now up to a 15-point lead. But they've had six shots to one. What a bad start. Eight minutes left in the quarter. Oh, Bullis dropped what he should have taken. And helped over the boundary line by Mann. And the body language says it all. He won't need the runner to come out. 60 metres from goal, right half forward for Fremantle in the first quarter from Subiaco. Son a problem there. Yes, it was. Maybe that got in Bullis' eyes when he went to take the chest mark. Kick number seven for Callahan. Hutton had it blocked by Killaway. Still a chance. Gee, Bill they're throwing themselves hard. in. Ball shuffled out the front of the pack. Already a whistle on play. And the umpire coming in, Adrian Pinozzo to bounce it some 35 metres from goal or throw it up on this spongy surface man and deer Bullis chance to make amends a little gift to Dundas Dundas's kick up towards half back and the mark is taken by Bond 
Craig Callahan has had seven kicks and one handball. He has been very dominant. Here's Brendan Gale. Oh, he's a very good overhead mark, is uh, Gale. On to Neil. Former Geelong utility player. Down to full forward, knocked away by O'Reilly. Jerika couldn't mark, but he races back. Over it comes to O'Reilly again. He, oh, he's too slow, O'Reilly, but he gets it to Callahan. Hand pass around the boundary line. Bauer gets it to Broderick. Back to Bauer. Quick kick. O'Reilly and Jerika. Jerika races back. Gilbert went in hard. It's kicked forward it's for Richmond. It's bouncing by Tawny. Oh, great goal by Jason Tawny. Well, luck. That's all you could put it down to. Tawny just put it on the ground and it happened to find the goals. But it's a good play here. I'm impressed with this Jerika. Here he is. Watch him put his body in again. And there is the goal. Richmond's first. They have really worked hard to get that. Nine points the difference. Tawny getting Richmond's first go off the ground. Oh. And now they go away again. Bond, they could make it another one. Still he goes. 55 metres out. Long bomb. And just touched on the line by Kickett to help it on its way through one point. Well, that was just like a training dr drill there. Deer getting the favourable bounce, hit it long. And again, it went to two Richmond players streaming through. Bond on the end, of, I think it was Broderick who got it down to him. And it two like a certain goal. 2-4 to 1-2, O'Reilly to Retzlaff. Knight stands the mark. Former Brisbane Bears player, Retzlaff. Kicks to the members' side here. Norris covering plenty of territory in the He's opening gone. quarter. He's off. Has to give away a hurried hand pass. Ridley. Going for a run. Over the top with the hand pass. Man, well dragged done, down Bond. by Bond. He's pretty quick. Punch away by McManus. Tried to get it to Durkai. Great skills from this fellow. Measures the pass. Gives it back to McManus. Terrific footy. We've got quite a game on our hands here. The Dockers are certainly fired up. I was impressed with the way Allen was going about his shepherding work off the ball and also the endeavour of Bond to break through those shepherds or attempted shepherds and lay a tackle on man. A little bit of a doubt about McManus taking his place in the side today. And great to see him out there. He's a very good player, McManus. Well, McManus and Callahan have livened up this game, haven't they? Right on 50. Struggles for the distance and accuracy and off the hands for one behind. Kicked by Sean McManus, so two behinds to him this afternoon. 2-5 to 1-2. Two. So Wayne Campbell appears to be the uh, designated kicker for today. He's bringing it straight down the middle of the ground. Whoa! Could have been a free kick to Bullis there, I agree with that. Yes, it's a good decision by the umpire. Yes, it's a pity uh, more umpires don't pay that, Peter. Uh, when, yes, when the guy's kicked out of the contest, I reckon it should be a free kick every time. Whether he's got his eyes on the ball or not. Here's Deer. Greg Deer bringing it down towards half forward, looking for Brendan Gale, but oh, that's a good mark. He Very did well good. last week, Matt. He again played centre half back against the, his old side. Well, that might be his right position, too, Don, as he gets it across here to Todd Ridley. Ridley's going to chip it out wide. This is good play. This is O'Reilly. Oh, he loves a run. Stephen O'Reilly trying to draw the man. Oh, he tried to do too much. He eventually gets it to Norwich. Norris on the left looking for Peter Mann. Neil is there. He leaves and waits for Durke. Waters gets it back towards Burton. Here's Mann. On to Allen. Oh, here's a chance for Benny Allen who bombs a torpedo putt wide and out on the full. Well, they're certainly going at it as a very, very entertaining game. Wayne Campbell is going to kick it in. Nine points the difference. If you've just joined us, late in the first quarter. Well, Campbell, a little bit of indecision, he gets around Hutton. Now he has to go via Darwin to avoid the traffic. Pass Grew. Straight out of bounds. <laughs> and then, then the Dockers crowd hooting. They reckon it was deliberate. Well, the direction was. It would be a brave umpire to pay that one. Neild and Durke, the two number 19s, one by the latter. Chance for Campbell again. Overruns it, Bond legs, should get a free kick, does. Advantage paid, Bond plays on, oh, it's a mark to Nash, is it? Yes. 
He's paid it. Chris Nash loves to kick a goal. He won't from there, but it's not a bad sort of a roost. He'll get it up towards Gale at half forward. Oh, hit him right in the mush. Misjudged it again. I think the Sun Factor applies a tackle. Callahan, oh, he's burning in the first quarter. Back to Murillo. Murillo short of left centre wing. Kick is short. Punched away by Dundas. Opens it up for Bond. He's an improved player, Bond. He is. He's pretty quick. Prescott's kick up towards half forward. Gale waiting for the bounce. Well, slaps it straight back to Retzlaff, who runs into trouble. Gets out of it just as well. Ball jarred free in the tackle. Still he goes, Retzlaff. Norrish applies a tackle. So too does Ridley. Picked up by Knights. Now a chance for the Tigers to go forward through. Rogers. he has a kick at goal. And he has kicked a behind. Gee, there was some terrific tackling by those Richmond guys. They just never gave up. Just kept harassing. And they caused eventually the turnover. That was just sensational play on their front end of the square. Well, that's one of the reasons they're second on the ladder. They really do chase and harass. As we see Brendan Retzlaff marking at half back. Retzlaff, a very strong build for the little fella. He's a real goer. Here's Burton, centre wing. Back it comes to Ridley, the former bomber. He gets onto his right boot. Oh, very ordinary kick. Well, he's slow out in the full. Not good play by Ridley, he had plenty of time. And a kick to Paul Bullis. Right on centre wing, and he's putting his hands up, saying there's no one moving for him. Paul Bullis. To half what Brendan Gale comes from the side. Retzlaff hooks it out. Good play. Here's Murillo. He looks as though he can play. Oh, he's backing himself in with a bounce. Then he looks for Scotty Waters, who should have gone for it instead of waiting for the bounce. Back it comes to Murillo, though. He can straighten up from 45 metres. He clears the pack. Can Jamie Tate get there? Goal, I think. I think it's a no, goal. No, 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 no. No, it's a free kick yeah, to Richmond. Well done by the umpires at a trip. I think there was a trip, or he said a little too well, high. He's paid the free kick to Jamie Tate, who chips it out, and he'll find Wayne Campbell. Campbell. It was great play by Murillo. Kicks it in short. Nash. Good duel, that one. Two of the class players on the field. Well, Ben, ben Allen, Allen was taken Knights. off the ground last week, Peter, and he was pretty hostile. Went straight up the race. Well, oh, a bit lucky. What did you think? Didn't seem too much in that, did they? So Ridley with Campbell. The ladder over the top to Rogers. Couldn't take it cleanly. Murillo again. Umpire calls play on. Waters held, and the Smurf will take the free kick. And back to Callahan. Hutton, too far underneath the ball. Groom kicks it back. Whence it came pretty quickly. Bullis will do the tidying up work if he can get time and space. Kellaway. Man. Just the required distance for the mark. Peter Mann, too far out the score. He'll be looking for options. Low trajectory drop punt. Prescott, almost the mark. McManus off the ground. Chance for Burton in his taboo game. Snapshot by Bell. And touch right on the line. Very good at spoiling Jamie Tate. Got a great eye. And he's, he's put it through with a well done punch. That's uh, as distinct from an underdone one, Don. Or medium rear. Burton in front. Now Bell, you get a second chance from right on 50. Pass is not a good one. And Tate chips in to take a good one. Yes, can Caught behind then, Groom. When playing in the forward line, you must be in front for those quick kicks. There's the kick out by Tate. It's knocked on by Ridley, but it lands with Chris Bond. Off he goes. A real good little battler. Chrissy Bond comes across half back and brings it out towards half forward. Oh, they race hard at the ball. That's Jerika there, and then eventually it's Daffy around the corner. A one on one contest. But the former Melbourne player, Phil Gilbert, races back to take the mark. He certainly did make some yardage then, Gilbert, to oh, take that mark. dangerous kick. It came off. Dale Kickett has taken the mark, but he was surrounded by Tigers. Here he goes, Dale Kickett, bringing it to the centre of the ground. And it's marked by Madigan. It's getting 10 seconds to go. They've got a big chance here, as Burton's not sure what to do. Oh, he gets it further afield, and the long kick comes from Retzlaff. They need a mark to groom, and they've got it. No mark, no. Didn't Gee, hold on long works. enough. And he didn't hold it long enough, said the umpire. 
And, and a it's an injured through. player down there, a Richmond player, Peter. I thought that siren was before the knock-on. Are they paying the point? I don't think they are. No, they're going out to consult now. I'm pretty sure that would not be a point. The it siren should, uh, shouldn't be. No, I thought the siren went. What's he's he doing? No, he. No score. No, he's, he's crossed that out. That's it. <laughs> the crowd thought he was going to play a goal. <laughs> That is all tricked. So at quarter time, and you could probably say the Dockers could or maybe should be further in front than they are. They lead 2-6-18 to Richmond, 1-3-9. The best athletes on the planet gathering Gothenburg next month. And Seven Sports will be there for the World Championships. Nine points the difference at quarter time at Subiaco. Gary Durka and Chris Groom, the goal kickers for Fremantle and for Richmond. Jason Tawney is their only goal kicker. Just on the siren, we had a little incident and it was a ball going through the goals that was ultimately not allowed for a score. The siren had sounded. Groom almost. Tape comes in on him. Ball jarred free in the tackle. And Hutton tries to go off the ground. 
And the end result of all that was no score. The cross flags from the goal umpire. And at quarter time, it's 2 6 to 1 3. Let's go down to Dwayne Lamb on the boundary. Thanks, Pete. Uh, Jerry was quite happy with that start, although he uh, doesn't want to be satisfied with it. They've got a lot more work to do before the game's finished, but they certainly got a lot more run in their game. Other side, Norley was, um, you know, he said he Ryan used a corridor up and down the middle and looked for their key positions and pressure on the Dockers. Thanks, Dwayne. Second quarter from Subiaco, 2 6 to 1 3 in favour of Fremantle. Certainly had a lot of the footy in the first quarter and probably should be further in front. Burton, sleight of hand almost onto Waters. Waters down towards half forward, bouncing ball, Hutton. And taken over the line. It's interesting, Peter, when they have those, or re uh, start after a goal or a bounce, uh, a goal or start of quarter, that the forwards on the both sides don't run into the, into the square. They leave both ends of the square open so the guys can come out of the square unimpeded. It's a boundary throw in, Mann and Bullis. Man wins it. Couldn't quite handle it. Bullis tries to go off the ground. To stalemates and umpire Trevor Garrett will officiate at the bounce or ball up. The latter. Man taps it to the advantage of his side and the advantage of his skipper. And a great snapshot. Paris third. And Don Scott, I know you'd be happy as a rock coach at Hawthorne with something like that. Yes, well, when they do come off, they're terrific, Peter. Here's Man. He's certainly got some ability, Man. But Alan, he's proving a real problem. They'll just have to tighten up on Alan. He's a different Alan today. He wore Tony Woods last week, and Woods did a terrific job. Broderick's now got the job on Alan. Six and one, Don. Six kicks, uh, one no, hand. No, no. Dundas has got the job with Alan now. <laughs> because uh, Knights had it earlier. And, and there's a bit of roughing up going on there. And as I said, six kicks and one the handball to Benny Allen. And he's important to this side. There's Broderick, a very good handballer. It's a 20 metre hand pass. Brendan Retzlaff went without it. Here's he's Nathan Bauer. Ball. Down towards half forward and it rolls over the line. So a throw in about 40 metres around from the Richmond goal. Certainly got a game on the hands. Here's uh, Brendan Gale oh, hooking it back with the left hand. Here's Dundas, the, Dundas, the former Fitzroy player. Rogers around the boundary line. Bauer cleverly over the top. That's good play. Daffy a quick kick at goal. And he's kicked it behind. Excellent play then to, by Bauer to keep that in around the boundary line there. 14 points the difference. Justin Charles warming up on the boundary line for the Tigers. So Jordan Northey about to make a change. No, Riley came well down the ground in the first quarter. Probably had thoughts of kicking a goal. Burton in front, couldn't take it. Knights. So another boundary throw in on the sunny side of the ground. It's going to be Deer with Jay Burton. The smaller of the two brothers, or perhaps we should, uh, should say not as tall as his brother. Bowers kick across the body. Courage needed there. Murillo showed plenty. Kick it. Onto Waters. Off one step. Kicks up towards centre wing. Bouncing ball affected. No, uh, man it was. Allen gets taken to the ground. And free kick. Well, that's not bad. Dollars. At least Dundas was with him and he laid him down as soon as he got the ball. He can keep doing that. He'll just sow the seed of doubt in Allen's mind every time he goes near the ball. So Ben Allen with the free kick. There yeah, must be the blood yeah, rule. The blood rule. David Burke uh, warming up and so... Justin Charles has been warming up for quite a while. I think Burke will probably come on first for the blood rule. It's interesting. I wonder who they're going to run with Alan now. Is Burke? I don't think Burke will. No. Burke's going down forward. Jerika's going up on the ball. And Justin Charles still waits his turn at the interchange gates. 
Jerika was following O'Reilly up the ground. Oh, and Burke's going to stand the mark. So the play will continue. The situation is a free kick to the Dockers, taken by Ben Avon. McManus robes it well. Gets ridden into the ground, scores a try. It's out of bounds. So about 45 metres closer to the Dockers' goal. They lead 3-6 to 1-4 in the second quarter. We've got under 18 minutes left before half-time. Rogers now going with Allen, and Burke has gone up onto that half-back line. He's picking up Ridley. Bullis, quick hand pass. Allen again oh, puts his body right on the line. And descended on by an ambush of Tigers. It's going to be a ball up in the centre square. 3-6, 24 Fremantle, the Tigers on 1-4-10. So, Gear, well he flicks it down with the left hand that was well played. Retzlaff knocks it on towards Callahan. That was Broderick shuffling it out. The umpire said a free kick. Broderick was manhandled after he got rid of the ball. And Paul Broderick has had an outstanding season for Richmond. Highly skilled player. About to belt it forward. It's the drop punt. Nice looking kick to have a Brendan Gale, centre of the pack, hands. And his name written all over that. Very good overhead mark. It's a wobbly one, but it'll come off because he got a very, very good lead by Jason Tawney and it hit him right on the chest. So Tawney will kick from he will kick from about 50, Jason Tawney. The margin at the moment, 14 points, right on 50. He's hooked it slightly, I think he's missed. And he's kicked the behind only. Tawney kicked a very good goal in the first term, a wobbly, bouncy one down the other end of the ground. So the margin, 13 points, as Stephen O'Reilly about to bring it back into play. It's certainly going, they're going to flood that out of flank, I think, in these kick-ins. Nice, oh. oh, great steal. And, and 50 metres oh, is a certain goal. Well, O'Reilly in the grand final last year, I reckon he gave three goals to the Eagles, if you remember, by chipping it in short. Do you recall that? I do. And I reckon, why, when are they going to learn to get the ball and belt it 70 metres out from goal? Like well, they believe, block. Peter, that if they do that, you're going to cause a turnover, and it's better to go short. Not yeah. in that situation. It was a good mark by Knights, a very good mark. One-hander in front of Waters is O'Reilly's kick. They've got what he's looking point, for is anybody's guess. But Knights made sure of it by the aid of the 50-metre penalty. Probably would have kicked it anyway, Don. Well, a handy one to the Tigers after that kick in. The margin, nine points at the moment. No, that's seven points. It's the main scoreboard showing nine points. I think it is seven points. It says 3-7 to 2-4, the yeah, main scoreboard. Yeah, so the main scoreboard is wrong. As we see Callahan going down to the half forward line. Abraham in front. Here's Wayne Campbell to centre wing. Broderick. Receives from Gale, and eventually the kick comes from Rogers right down towards half forward. Phil Gilbert couldn't take the mark. Good play by Burke. Here's David Burke, picked it up beautifully. He's harassed, though, by Dale Kickett, and the ball is forced over the line. What's Burke doing down there? He's on the half-back fly and picking up uh, Ridley. It's almost in the forward pocket for Richmond. Gale with Madigan. Ridley a chance, a fumble, gets taken down, he'll get a free kick. Took a great mark in the first quarter, Todd Ridley. And he's going to come across the goal and also goes short. Murillo likes a run, likes a bounce. He's got the speed to go with it, kick up towards centre wing, punched away from Durko by Neil. another whistle on play. And this time it's going to be a Dockers free kick. I hope they're consistent with that rule. The umpires, he's definitely holding, but there's a few undetected ones going on. Gary Durko, who kicked their first goal, gets it down to Norris. 
And he's been pretty busy this afternoon. This will be his 10th disposal. Huge pack of players. No mark taken. Snap at goal by Winston Abraham. Is off target and out of bounds. Tracked over the line by Duncan Kellaway. Matty Dundas off the ground of the blood rule. Dwayne Lamb has some news for us. Yeah, unfortunately he bit through his gum, so uh, there was quite a lot of blood there. I'm not sure if it might need a stitch, but he'll be back on shortly. OK, thanks, Dwayne. Allen, courage needed there. Bauer, oh, gee, taking it over the line. You've got to be careful with that these days. Now, David Burke's playing half forward. He's been picked up by Kickett. Ridley's gone and picked up uh, Daffy. They were picking up one another across the Fremantle half forward line. Man punches to the front. Knights gets it over the top to Bullis kick up towards midfield Dockers had the numbers they should be able to do something with this if Kickett can ever control the footy he can gets it back to Jay Burton Burton's kick up towards left half forward that's as far as it's going and the bounce right on the 50 metre line Ben Allen's got one, Gary Durke one and Groom one for the Dockers Jason Tawney Watt and Matthew Knights the goal kickers for Richmond early in the second quarter with their double header Campbell long looping hand pass to Broderick a nice sidestep Bond back to Campbell running well from midfield kicks up towards half forward Gale needs to bounce for him Ridley's got him terrific tackle, tackle. ball fell to the ground in the tackle crowd looking for a free kick and the umpire has decided that's Trevor Garrett that it's going to be a bounce. Yeah, I think it was a good decision. Although he tried to beat the man, but it was held to him. He lost in the tackle. Probably a good decision by the umpire. So, well, they tried to reef it out, Norrish. There's Scotty Waters has been very busy. A clever hand pass. Very, very well done to Retzlaff. Then on to Murillo. Murillo bombs it and puts it out in the full. So it'll be a free kick out here to Ashley Prescott. Centre wing. So the margin seven points in favour of Fremantle as they fly for it. Here's Jason Norris doing pretty well. Oh, dangerous hand pass because Burke read it very, very well. David Burke, talented young player. Gets it to Charles. This is the former Footscray player, Justin Charles, a good kick. Up towards Ridley who flies. And he's showing his goal. Oh, an ordinary hand pass. He miss he mishit it actually on the left hand and it rolled over the line. So, Daffy peeling back should be going forward to the ball. So it's a boundary throw in, 35 metres from goal. Campbell up over the top. Norris again. Waters down. That Norris. Hot. It was hot, he couldn't take it. Bauer a chance. Nash in there. Now off the ground, Daffy. That's as far as they're going. Callahan. Bombs it towards the 50 metre line. Important ball to be won here. Bowers got it, lost it. Marillo's tackle effective, it's out of bounds. Throw in just on the 50 metre line. And the crowd appreciative of Marillo's efforts. He's not bad, Marillo. Daffy's hurt himself too. Hands on knees, he's bent over, he's doubled up. So Campbell does the ruck work. Waters, neat hand pass to Callahan. And that time, that's a better kick. No options there. Charles was ready to snap of it. Daffy's still feeling as if he's been hit with a Mack truck. I think he'll be OK. They breathe them tough down at Punt Road. Let's see what happened to uh, Nick. Hip and shoulder there from Retzlaff. So it's on centre wing. Knights from Retzlaff. Hand pass, Broderick. Loses a little ground to Rogers. Rogers kicks inside 50. Chance for Burke. Jerica. Trying to brief the ball out of his opponent's hands. Kick it on the bottom of the pack. Shuffles it out the back with uh, some sleight of hand, but it's going to be a ball up. David Howlett, the man wearing number one. Will always be remembered by Gary Bacanara and that famous 15-metre penalty against Jimmy Steins at Waverley. Kick out of the pack comes to Tawny. Marilla, Nash. Tawny, well tackled by the skipper. Ball jarred free, and it comes out to Marillo. Kick along the boundary line, punched away by Bullis. Almost out of bounds, still he goes. Kick back inside 50, 35 metres from goal. Broderick, 
Turns on a strip and he bit and has a ping at the majors. Gets a mighty score by Paul Broderick, his first of the day. He's and doing well, Broderick. I like the way that he's going in after the ball and then he's feeding it off. He's always looking for someone in a better position or trying to do something constructive with the ball. 13 possessions he's had so far. Oh, he's a good player, Paul Broderick. Fitzroy certainly didn't want to lose him as we see Ridley. Oh, he's going short as well. It'll come off as it's marked by Greg Madigan. He's really built himself up over the last couple of years. Greg, former Marsland College uh, schoolboy in Melbourne, could jump about seven foot in a high jump. That's a good mark to Peter Mann. He's doing well, man. On to Benny Allen. Allen, a low trajectory drop putt. It'll clear the pack here. Oh, well played. On to McManus. Now on to Waters. He's not sure what to do with it, Scotty Waters. Onto the left foot, he needs someone to lead for him. But Callaway's on top of Hutton. And Callaway chips in to take the mark. This is where they fall down, the Dockers there. 4-9 is pretty ordinary. As we see Broderick, the centre of the ground, clears the head of Rogers. Burton gets it to Callahan, who was best man in the ground the first quarter. Onto the left foot, out wide. And again, Callaway bustling uh, Hutton off the ball. Callaway working overtime in the packs, and the umpire will bounce. 40 metres from goal, halfway through the second quarter. Fremantle leading by six points. <coughs> Knocked down by Mann. Charles tried to get the hand pass out to Bond, a little bit too severe for him. And Durke sees it safely over the line for a throw in. It is right on 50. Goals hard to come by here. Defences of both sides, you would say, fairly well on top. Dockers probably should have been further in front at quarter time. Charles does the ruck work. Down to Knights. Durke off the ground. Has to beat three of them. And they descend upon him like a seagull on a piece of fat. Daffy's come off for Richmond and Marinda has come on and just looking at the instructions he's got, or got, was receiving, he's got to move around on that forward line, Marinda. Charles and Mann. Durke a snap. Off target. Won't quite get there. Groom up in front. Couldn't complete the mark. Tape off the ground. Crowd says deliberate. <laughs> Umpire Pinozzo says throw it in. So right at the halfway stage of the second term. It's going to be Groom and Bullis. Oh, coat hanger there on Hutton. Oh, too high that as well and he'll take the free kick 26 goals so far in the season John Hutton let's look at it again against Jamie Tape pretty difficult shot though outside 50 but he's not a bad kick John Hutton actually is a very long kick of a football but hasn't kicked as well for goal this year as we said earlier and this is one that they could really do with the Dockers because Richmond have had a lot of the play on their forward line the last 10 minutes. So Hutton kicks. This is close. This is very close. I think he's kicked it. Oh, great kick. Brilliant kick by Hutton from the boundary line. That's more like his kicking ability and a handy one. They now lead by 12 points, the Dockers. 3-4 last week, Hutton. There's a certain free kick here just too high it's bad play by Tate maybe just a little too enthusiastic he's got to just temper that a little bit but it was a beautiful kick from Hutton from a long way out on difficult angle the Fremantle Dockers lead Richmond by 12 points after a brilliant kick from the boundary line by the full forward John Hutton and uh, that was his first for the game. Oh, look at this for good play out of the middle. This is Abraham, the exciting Winston Abraham. Oh, he tried to do too much, got himself into all sorts of trouble. Roderick to Knights. And the brilliant centerman coming through the middle. Knights rebounds as he can go again for. He steadies. He goes bang. Will he kick a goal? Ridley helps it on its way and flicks it over the back row behind. Oh, he got the free kick, Ridley. And uh, good play by Ridley. He's playing a fair game. Ben Allen remonstrating with the umpire. Charles off, deer on. 
11 points the difference. But you can see the advantage of keeping the front end of the square open. You, if you get the break in the centre, you just run through unimpeded. Well, gee, he had to take that, Abraham, and boy, did he have to stretch. Callahan coming off. You are on for the Dockers. Low trajectory pass. Allen. A little give. Murillo. Murillo to half forward. Good mark. Taken down there by Mann. Played Mew well. Mew is running with uh, Broderick. It's too far out to score. Mann's kick to the goal square. Tape. Could have almost had a free kick and that will be a free kick. Jerika off and Charles back on. He's going down to the full forward line. Uh, young uh, Jerika's found a lot tougher on O'Reilly, Don, hasn't he? Oh, I've still been impressed with him, Peter. He's oh, let yeah, O'Reilly the saying... ball. It's just not going his way at the moment. But oh. I, he's a bit of a fighter. Yeah, I know. But I'm just trying to make the point. O'Reilly is a very, very good fullback. Chris Bond's kick to the outer side. A holding decision going the Dockers' way. He's a goer, Retzlaff, isn't he? Kick and a half from goal is Brendan Ritz left. Hutton underneath it. Is there a mark? It's a free, free kick, kick to Richmond. Taken by Tape. See, if they could pick up a couple of forwards, they'd be a fair side, uh, Fremantle, wouldn't they? It's where they're falling down, finding hot, uh, goals pretty hard to get. Punch away favours Campbell. He takes it out, and it will be a throw in 50 metres from goal. Scoreboard sh uh, shows 4 6 to 2 7 in favour of the home side 30 plays 19 a difference of 11 points seven minutes left to half time their back line's pretty good if they get chisholm back in and make a big difference too there's a good play that was broderick shuffling it out there to campbell here's a mark good mark too taken by tawny off he goes jason tawny a nice kick too ridley bumped out of it well played by dale kick it and he has a bounce Brings it back inside the Norris. There's a running game of the Dockers starting to work as we see Norris bombing it down to full foot again. Groom and Hutton. Groom waited at the back. Jamie Tape kicks it off the ground. Out it comes. And Bauer, he went without it. Well played by Watters. Tried to do too much. Gets in a hand pass. Back it comes. Jamie Tape put on a good shepherd. Allows Bullis, but he ran into the man. And a good umpiring decision. He had no possible chance of getting rid of that. Scotty Waters is taking a bit too long to get rid of the Agreed. ball, Peter. Agree. He should throw it on the boot. Well, just get his first reaction. He's trying to do the second. There's no hope that Bullis could have got rid of that ball. It's a bounce. A ball up. Durke. Neil, good tackle. Nick Mattis goes hard at the footy. Umpire says a holding decision. Which way is this going? It's going to Fremantle, it looks like. Yes, he, Dirk, eh? he handballed the ball in front of him, I think. Pete and then was grabbed. Burton's off too, and now White is back on. As Durko lines up. David Howard, the officiating umpire there. And he's going in short. Needs to be pinpoint accuracy, and it is. Man has got it. He wouldn't be far off best on ground, man, I think, Don. What do you think? Well, interesting, Peter. I thought that Alan was uh, pretty good in the first quarter. It's working well across our forward, I must admit, man. Four marks, six kicks and five hand passes. It's not bad for centre forward. It's pretty good. Wayne Carey would be happy with that. North Melbourne, of course, his old club in the AFL. He kicks it goal and he sneaked it in. So the goals are shared by the Dockers, five different goal kickers, they lead 5-6 to 2-7. Well, I was going across and acknowledging the work of Durke, man, and that's good to see. The man has done quite well in the rucking contest, he's worked hard across that half-back line. It's a good battle between he and Bullis. Seventeen points, the Dockers lead. Let's see what Richmond can do as Knights gets it to Campbell. Down towards half forward. Their forward line hasn't been functioning. Here's Madigan going in after it. Well played by Greg Madigan. He gets it out to kick it, who's been a good player. He chips it in the Muir. And Muir has marked at half back. The former North Melbourne reserves player Muir. As he brings it to centre wing, it'll be a Richmond mark. And it is taken there by Rogers. Matthew Rogers. Gets it to Campbell, Wayne Campbell to the half forward line that Gilbert puts himself in. Good play by Gilbert because that allowed 
his teammate Madigan to give it across. Oh, this is good team play coming up here from the Dockers. Kick it. Oh, terrific vision as he finds Ben Allen. So no problem then for Allen. Well, a bit of pressure on here. Oh, look at a loose man for the Dockers out wide. Running onto it is Brendan Retzlaff. He can race into an open goal. He stabs, goes bang and puts it through. Great play the Dockers. I wonder if Richmond just made a change at the wrong time then because Dundas was coming on. Retzlaff was by himself. Although that's Campbell's man. Son a bit of a problem there for Allen. Great and here he is finding Retzlaff out wide, but Richmond will make you a change. Retzlaff's goal giving the Dockers a handy lead. Richmond would like the early reply. Knights to Broderick. Well, that's a mammoth kick by Broderick. Down towards full forward. O'Reilly punches the ball clear. Does the follow-up work himself. Burke tries to snaffle it close to the boundary line. He gets taken over. The ball still in play. Is that out on the full? Gee. Certainly out in the forward pocket for the Tigers. Crowd in full voice here at Subiaco. Dockers trying to break their run of outs. They've lost their last five games, but they're in pretty good shape at the moment. Burke, snapshot, won't quite reach its target. Charles, Ridley, Muir, back to Ridley, taken over the line down there by Mark Miranda. It's out of bounds, same spot. Both forwards blind playing the conventional uh, full forward positions. Two forward pockets, a full forward. A lot of space in which those guys can lead because their half forwards are well up the ground. Gale to Broderick, good ruck work. They couldn't clear the zone. Waters can. Oh, through some heavy traffic. How did he get out of that? Like finding an extra lane on Melbourne Southeastern Arteria, it's impossible. Kick comes to Campbell. Snackles it up. Knights. Steadies. Long shot. Won't quite make the distance. Miranda over his shoulder. Oh, Murillo takes it through for a rush behind. Gee, that was terrific work by Justin Charles. Wayne Campbell could have gone a little bit harder to get over and help Charles as O'Reilly was running away. It was a two-on-one situation favouring the Dockers. It was terrific work by Charles to at least make a contact. Then Campbell took the advantage of his work. The short kick in again. This time it comes off to Dale Kickett, who's been excellent. He chips it in short. This is their game. Retzlaff. He's looking to draw the man. Oh, and then he gets through a wall of players and brings it down to the half forward line. Pace is needed here. McManus might get there first. Oh, he had a little fumble there. You can't afford that. Bullis is caught high, I would think. Yes, and the umpire right under that. It'll be a free kick to Paul Bullis. Bullis at half back. He's been under enormous pressure playing on Peter Mann. He brings it into Dundas. Dundas to Broderick, who's been excellent. In towards Gale. He's underneath it. It's a loose ball. Ridley. That back line doing well. The Richmond forward line not functioning at the moment. Here's Muir and Bond. And Bond had the pace but couldn't take the mark. Dundas has got it. The Tigers fighting hard to get it back forward again. Campbell underneath it. Still no mark. Scotty Waters playing a great game. Grabs it on centre wing and brings it to half forward. Reading the play beautifully, Waters. Oh, Hutton. What a mile in the air. Couldn't complete the mark. Ball hacked out of the pack up towards centre wing. That's a holding decision to Richmond. The umpire calls play on. Broderick will. Now Tawny, who kicked their first goal off the ground of the opening quarter. Punched down by Charles. Good gather. Back to Miranda. That pair starting on the bench. And it... Bounces through for one behind. Peter, mistake I made earlier. Groom is on the bench. Groom on the bench. Burton's still on the ball. And White, that's Jeff White, is down on the full forward line for the Dockers. Ridley to kick in. 42 to 21. So the Dockers just double Richmond's score at the moment. Approaching half time. Only a few minutes left. Murillo, a nice sidestep around Tawny. Gets around Gale. Still he goes from half back kick at the target could have almost been a free kick there Nash read it better he usually doesn't watch the kick this time he finds Knights well kick had made the mistake of not going for the ball and worrying about the man too much well when you got somebody coming at you oh, like Nash no, yeah. did he should have gone for the mark instead of 
trying Def to kick the Def man you're warming up for Richmond. Def, you're warming up on the boundary. So Knight's a chance. He'll be kicking just inside 50. Tigers badly need this one. Oh, it's coming back. Goes out. Oh, that's a great goal. Knight kicks his second and kicks the Tigers back into it. They trail 3-9 to 6-6 with just over a minute left before half time. Well, if it was a golfing shot, it drew beautifully. Knights's kick. Bit like Daffy, Peter Sumit. Daffy now coming on. Here it is. What's this in flight? It's starting out left and coming to the right. A beautiful kick. Fifteen point lead to the Dockers. Oh, well played by Burton. As he got it down to Waters, he runs to 50. Scott Waters brings, oh, he tried to bring it back. He couldn't do so, and he's kicked to behind only. It's interesting the way they're playing it. We've seen now the Dockers come out of that centre square, and nobody coming in the opposite direction to stop them. And Waters got the ball in the centre, just kept running because he knew the front end of the square was open. A good kick by tape as far as uh, distance, but oh, well, Hutton not got it back into play. Straight to Callaway though, on the bower, back to Callaway, he brings it towards centre wing, Madigan at the back, a chance for the Tigers because Knights is out there with Gale, a bit of talent there between the two of them, oh Kickett weaves his way through, this is exciting stuff, well played by Dale Kickett, still going on with it, and he brings it back to half forward, I need a mark, and who's there, White is there, knocked away by Neil back it comes a chance for Hutton on the left he brings it back in front of goal but it's all Richmond and Campbell takes the mark <laughs> second attempt too from Wayne Campbell Not the greatest of kicks in the, uh, the game so far tape around to Naish <coughs> he seems to do his best work close to goal but there's the siren for half time and the Dockers led at quarter time 2-6 to 1-3 and they lead at half time 6 7 43 to 3 9 27. So, with the Dockers leading by 43 to 27, it's time for seven nightly news at HSV with Peter Mitchell. Both teams back onto the ground for the resumption of play in the third quarter. Fremantle leading 6-7 to 3-9. 43 plays 27 at half time. The Dockers goal kickers all singles and for Richmond, Matthew Knights has two goals. Don Scott, what moves do you think that John Northy Well, might he's have already played? made some, Peter, and that is uh, Gale's gone to full forward. Campbell looks like he's going to cross the half forward line. Daffy's still there. Bullis is also across half forward. Nash across half forward. So moves have been made. Burke's at centre half back. Who else have we got? We can see any others quickly. Daffy's still, uh, not Daffy, Callaway's picking up Hutz, um, Hutton. 
Uh, Dundas still going with Alan Knights in the centre and also Broderick in the centre. I'm not quite sure what the umpire is waiting for. All seems to be in readiness for the resumption of play. Rogers back on the ground. He's playing on Norris on the wing. And they're looking down towards the grandstand end. Maybe waiting for all the flag bearers to get off. There was a very spectacular display at half time by members of the Fremantle supporters group. And I must congratulate the Dockers on putting on the display. It was terrific, really. It's got a great theme, haven't they? They have. The third quarter from Fremantle, from Serbiaco, with Fremantle leading 6 7 to 3 9. Burton in the ruck. Can't get a clear tap out. Broderick. Broderick's kick up towards half forward and the mark is taken by Naish. Ooh. Looks for 50, won't get it. Broderick and Callahan on behind play. And Gale, the move to full forward. Is that 50? He's got the mark and 50, 50 and will get a goal. Well, so. silly play by O'Reilly. Very silly play because it's handing a goal when he mightn't have kicked it from out I'm there. just watching what's going on behind play because Callahan's gone across the umpire and uh, saying, like, I got one in the nose, what about doing something about it? So Brendan Gale with a gimme. You don't get much of a chance here if you're a full back. This is their second gimme of the day. It is. That'll be their fourth. So two out of four gimmies. And Gale kicks it. And then that's just the start that John Northey wanted to get the Tigers rolling. The difference back to ten points. Well, it's a goal, but I would have liked a better type goal than that. One where they really got it down with a little bit of inspirational play. It's only 10 points of difference, but still, they all count. Uh, one thing about uh, the Tigers, you see a silly... This is interesting, Pete, what's happening out there. Now, you watch this. Allen's going with Knights, Dundas with Knights. So that leaves Callahan unattended. Unless uh, Broderick's going to pick him up. Well, Waters could be unattended now. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, Deer won it to Campbell. A quick kick down towards Bullis. Playing on the forward line. Uh, well taken by Dale Kickett. He's been outstanding. On to Scott Waters. Waters from half back. Bombs it in towards half forward. Comes over the back towards uh, Mark Neal. Neal to quick hand pass in the direction of Broderick, who's been a very good player. Neal again. There's Waters again. Off the bounce, straight to Waters. Waters can see McManus running into the space. Will it sit for him? Yes, it will. He's got it and he dodges around. He's a very good young player, Sean McManus. Into the pocket. Durke is there. He's got support from Callahan, who's been excellent. Oh, he hooks it back at goal. Oh! Cuts right on the line. I think it was David Burke. But a terrific attempt by Callahan, who in the first quarter of the match was the best man player on the ground. And he's now had 13 and 3, Pete. That was the knock on. The kick out from full back comes to Dundas. Dundas at left half back. On to Campbell. Ridley's making sure he doesn't go anywhere, but he'll have to let him go now or he'll get 50. Wayne Campbell on centre wing. Kick number 12. Lands at half forward. Bullis and Madigan. Kick it. Outnumbered. Nash. Goes in hard for the football. Bauer across his body. Snaps. O'Reilly in front. Oh. I was just about to say, takes the mark. This oh. is the mark. Gale's got a great chance. Sets up Knights. Knights for his third. 30 metres out. Misses an absolute sitter. Misses the lot. Out of bounds. I suppose Sitter might be a little bit hard on uh, Knights, but by the same token... It looks like he's hurt his hand out. too, uh, O'Reilly. Look at him holding that hand. Oh, Has he dislocated a finger? He might have done. He didn't, didn't look too good. Madigan. In the last couple of games I've seen Madigan play, certainly been uh, in his best. He's fumbling a bit, Scotty Waters. It's taken a while to get rid of the ball too. You can see them working on O'Reilly's hand. I think he's got to go off. He's coming off. Or just there. He rolled on it, did he? Oh, what Dundas? Richard luck for O'Reilly. And coming on will be White. Ball at the half back line. Kick oh. out by Bauer. Never Tawny. Done, never done one of those. Have you ever done one, Peter? Just a coat of finger? Yes, and it, uh, it's not fun getting it pulled oh. back in the place either. I'll take your word for it. Madigan. Campbell over the top as he does so often. Marullo tracks it to the boundary 
and it will be another throw in. So the Dockers not able to add to their goal tally at half time. They still lead those 6 8 to 4 9. The difference is 11 points. So uh, Madigan versus Bullis. Bullis saw oh, he nearly got it away. Quick kick by Campbell. Down towards Tawny. And uh, underneath that pack also is Phil Gilbert, the former Melbourne uh, fullback and back pocket player. So again, we'll have a look at the ruck contest. The umpire throwing it up, Madigan and Gale. Gale gets it to Campbell. That was good play. And the ball bounces and sneaks through for a behind. So Richmond having most of the play at the moment. Ten points the margin. Todd Ridley to bring it back in with O'Reilly off the gr ground. So Ridley is going to bring it out to Ben Allen. That's a beautiful kick, actually. And Allen has been a good player. Oh, they'd want to get this to Dockers. There's three Richmond players here, and the bounce is going to favour Retzlaff. Retzlaff quickly gets his boot to it. To the dangerous Durkay. He's got it. Oh, well played, Durkay. He is a talented player. Onto the left he goes. Brings it out in front. Racing after it is Peter Bell. Still going on with it. Bell, he ran into his teammate. Awesome oh, strong players. Is that Peter Mann underneath there? The Tigers charge in and the umpire will Just bounce. interesting in watching Prescott as the ball was on this near flank. He's more interested in his man, McManus, not letting him get a kick. He should have gone and got the ball there. He should be able to play off his man. And the Dockers have made a change too. And uh, Muir came coming on, on is Muir, who's in white off. Campbell. Now it's farmed out. Taken away by Dundas. The hand pass coming from Prescott. Kick up towards centre wing. Madigan. Goes hard at the football. Hawthorne Premiership player. Let's go down to the boundary line now. And uh, Dwayne, what happened to O'Reilly? Uh, Pete, yeah, as you said, it was a dislocated finger. Had a bit of fun putting it back in. And they're just taping it back up now. So I'm sure he'll take further part a little bit later. Well, let's hope he can. Kick away by Durke. Comes up to Mann. Well he almost dragged it in. Going to be a Richmond free kick, though. Bond. Free kicks 9 to Fremantle and 13 to Richmond now. Campbell from centre half back. Short kick. The Tigers lifting their work right in the third quarter. Rogers centres the ball. Knights a little gift of bow, but he was pinned. That was by Callahan. Retzlaff also taken down. Knights gets it on quickly to bow. They're working hard. Down goes Durke. Kick up towards Ridley. Oh, had it, lost it, still got it. Long looping hand pass. Chance for the Tigers. Set up for Nash. He loves these. Can't get it clear. Rogers, Nash again. Almost a throw. Umpire says it is. A free kick. No, it's a free kick. It's going Richmond's way. Well, it could have gone either way. Nash has got the football. Ten possessions so far for him. And has yet to score a goal. It generally gets amongst them. Game number 100. And what's he done? I think he's missed. He has. Probably a better snapshot. 4-11 to 6-8. And they are the fingers of O'Reilly. Stephen O'Reilly dislocating the finger. And having it taped up. He'll be back onto the ground for the Dockers. Hopefully shortly. Allen at right half-back flank. Former Hawthorne uh, sentiment. Kicks us straight to Matty Knights. So Matthew Knights. The half forward line. Oh, look at this, a loose man here in the pocket. Oh, but a good mark by Ben Allen. It looked like Chris Nash was going to take that. But Allen ducked back and took a very good mark. And yeah, what a dangerous kick. He was looking for Callahan. He might get away with it. But it was very dangerous. Here's the running kick it. He's exciting. Look at him. Uh, Durke, is it? Yes, it is Durke. Down to Hutton. Is that a mark? Yes, it is. 55 metres from goal. And a good mark by Hutton in the end. Let's kick 1-1 one, one today. Well, he, a lot of players would not make the distance from here, but I would give him a big yes, chance. Yes, he's not a bad kick, is he? He's, well, he's lining up and he's pretty confident himself, Peter. Well, he's got to kick this about 55 metres. There's the kick. It won't quite get there. And a thump over the line or through for a behind. The goal up by says it snuck in for a behind. Just, just outside the kick. That was a great passage of play. And as I've mentioned before, he knows when to lead Hutton. And he's got a lot of space because the full forward line is playing well down the ground. Broderick's kick marked by Deer. 
from a Hawthorne Ruckman. Deer for right half back. Ridley will punch and punch it successfully. Clears the zone. Gets it away from Mick Daffy, who is waiting, ready to pounce. Throw in will take place centre wing out of side. 13 minutes left in the third quarter. Todd Ridley played in the Foster's Cup Premiership side with Essendon and in a Premiership side in the uh, VSFL lineup. Richmond have got now Matthew Knights on the half forward line and Ben Allen's going with him so that's not a bad ploy because it'll make Allen become a defensive player and keep him out of the action. David Howell has paid a free kick to Dundas. Centre wing. Ridley, Bullis. Ridley gets front position. Bullis had two hands and I couldn't drag it down. Richmond have got uh, Chris Bond in the back pocket. He's picking up uh, Bell. He was a good player in the first quarter, up around midfield. I don't know why they don't put him up there. Ridley, Campbell. Bullis to Dundas. It's out of bounds again in front of Knights. It's a very low scoring game. Only 10 goals scored so far. Seems to be the norm over here. Bullis once again with Ridley. Won by the Richmond Ruckman. Docker's possession though. Ben Allen up towards Mann. Good mark. Leading out in front of Burke. Who's been brought back on the mark. Now play on. Oh, good kick. Oh, Hutton. Big leap. Callaway right behind. Went straight with him. Dundas goes down. Cop one too high. Oh, it's going to be on here, I think. No. They thought about it, the melee rule uh, oh, it's maybe coming into force. Well, Scott Waters, mm. that... I mean, the melee rule, I mean, you've got to go over and at least show a little bit of sympathy, support, whatever, for your teammate. Campbell, good mark. Now Daffy, Daffy's kick up towards half forward. Tawny caught well underneath the ball. Gilbert is outnumbered. Opportunity for the Dockers. Madigan gets the hand pass away. Murillo. Very heavy traffic there. Madigan again barges his way through. That was well done. Out comes to Callahan. Callahan's kick just landing inside the boundary. Bell can't make ground. It's out of bounds on centre wing. So the game right in the balance here. A terrific atmosphere. Fremantle by 10 points. Deer. It's taking on Jay Burton. Here's Scotty Waters who's playing an excellent game. He's trying to do a little bit too much though and he's, he's gone. He's turning it over again. Oh Peter. yes, he's turning it over far too much as he gets straight to Deer. Here's Matty Knights. Back with a hand pass. Daffy on the left. Danger because Brendan Gale. Oh, good spoil. Well played. That was by Madigan. And uh, Gale really hit had his name written all over that time. No, Madigan he did that Fisk last week. Out. Just at the appropriate time he does the right thing. Uh, Madigan, he did it last week and he's doing it again today. Burton off and White coming on for Fremantle. So the umpire throwing the ball up. Gale and Madigan. Gale, a sort of free kick in that ruck contest and wait for the ironical uh, cheers from the crowd. Madigan, doing a fair job at centre back. 10 to 16 in favour of Richmond, the freeze. Here he goes. He'll so switch Madigan, it. oh, this is uh, very daffle. He should be kicking the ball. Now to Norris. Norris, oh, he's going to be run down. They're trying to muck around too much, so Fremantle. Be much better off getting it now. This might cost him a goal as Daffy latches onto it. Onto the left boot. Thank you very much, says Daffy. Bad play, Fremantle. Well, he loves a goal, Daffy. He loves a goal. He's been their most consistent uh, forward this year, Daffy. He's been off the ground. But they just try and switch play, or what teams now realise is that this Docker side are going to run with the ball, and if you keep chasing, you're going to bring them down. And that's what happened there. Norris turned it over. <clears throat> so less than a kick in it now, halfway through the third quarter. That was Daffy's 30th goal of the year, his first of the afternoon. Terrific ruck work by the Tigers. Broderick to Charles. Charles starting on the bench, kick out wide, Ridley doing some good work down there in defence, one bounce, took a great mark in the first quarter, mans the target, Bell in front, they couldn't bring it down, Bond does the tidying up work for the Tigers, up to Campbell, nice mark, kick it's got him. Well done by Campbell. Campbell from midfield, 
giving Richmond plenty of drive. Good quarter by Knight so far. Knight turns on a threepenny bit, long bomb up the goal. Well off target though, scrapes in for a minor score. So a behind kick by Matthew Knight. Back into the side today, making his tally this afternoon. Two goals, two out of the Tigers' total of 5-12, and the difference is back to three points. Matthew Nice, 11 kicks and eight handballs, a class player. Here's Phil Gilbert, oh, he's going to kick straight, straight to Campbell. That is very ordinary play by Gilbert. Peter Bell off, Peter. No, Peter Bell off. Here's Campbell, bring it in towards Brendan Gale at the back. And a free kick though, I think it'll be paid, or you know, he's paying the mark to White. Winston Abraham on for Bell. Well, here's that short pass again on to Norris. Norris to Murillo. Murillo can run and bounce. Murillo, oh, beautiful kick to Durke. Lovely disposal. This is uh, Gary Durke. Exciting player. Brings it in towards half forward. Ben Allen is there. No support. Here's Ashley Prescott picking it up and he bringing it down towards the half forward line. Murillo dives. Couldn't mark. Nash loses it. Good tackle. It allows Waters to swoop on the ball. He brings it out to Callahan, And he marks on centre wing. Because they haven't got a lot of high markers, they, they're forced to chip it around. Here they go again, Ben Allen. Broderick's got the job on Allen now. So Allen's going to kick long. He's got Groom back in the square. Groom should nearly mark this. With two bites. A couple of marks he should have taken. He hasn't been able to hang on to long enough. And the ball is forced over the line. Eight minutes left in the third term. Right forward pocket for the Dockers. They need a goal. They still lead 45 to 42. Man tries to do a Gary Ablett and take it from the throw in. Couldn't do so. Campbell had a chance. Now Man again. Looks for uh, Abraham. Oh. Went without the footy. That wasn't good. Campbell takes the hand pass. Kick number 18 for him. He's having a great game. Up towards Bullis. Almost the mark. Jarred free in that marking contest. Tawny. A little chip shot. Kick it in the road, takes the mark at centre half back in front of Charles. He transfers it out to Allen, who's having a much better game than he did last week against his old side. Oh, oh yes, game on his own. Rogers. Now the umpires put a whistle on play. Free kick going to the Dockers for a trip and 50. Well, well that's right, a no, that's a professional free kick because they would have been off anyway. I mean, uh, Durgay was by himself. Allen, I don't know why Allen went back in there when Durgay was by himself on the right. That's See, not 50 metres, surely. Well, that's what he's given. And he hasn't given 50, he's given 35. Well, that's all right, I wouldn't complain. That's if right. you're a Richmond supporter. He anyway. intentionally did it, it was a professional free. But is that 50 metres or is it a free kick where it happened on? You think about it, it wasn't after the... I'm thinking form. about it, but I'm also thinking Jeff White's got a chance at goal. And they need it, Fremantle, they haven't got a goal this quarter. Been on and off the bench, White. Kicks from 45. He's got the goal. That's the bottom line. The Dockers hit back. Jeff White's first goal. Seven different goal scorers for Fremantle. It's 7 9 to 5 12. Now, in that passage of play there, Allen should have gone down the ground. It was a great effort. There's the free kick, the intentional. And Peter McKenna's still got a frown on his face. But the score is in the ball. A handy one to the Dockers. They lead by nine points. As the Tigers go forward, Phil Gilbert, he works very, very hard. That was Rogers hooking it back. Oh, the free kick. Advantage paid. Got to keep running these oh, Dockers down. They like the run with the ball. This is Dale Kickett. Oh, oh, dangerous, dangerous. Oh, he got it back, Waters. To kick it. Here's Muir. They've lifted a cog here. Durke at the back and Hutton. Durke went in against Broderick. The Tigers try to shuffle it out. Strong tackle by Callahan. And the umpire sensibly comes in. And a good decision by the umpire because the Richmond player had no chance of getting rid of that. I think they're going to move Rogers. The runner's going out to Rogers. And you can see there the tackle by Callahan. Uh, the whole point as it came in the air as he grabbed it he was tackled and that was good umpiring as we see charles against white <laughs> callahan goes to ground and the umpire will come in and bounce it again almost a high tackle that one 
Adrian Pinotto. He's going to ball it up. Crowd really getting involved in this one. 51 to 42 in favour of the home side. Fremantle losing their last five. White goes up high. The youngster tried to find Muir. Campbell. Quick kick out of the pack by that player. Up to Knights. Doesn't usually oh. waste it. Brilliant play by Knights. Two bounces. He'll have another one. Three on the edge of the square. Kicks from 55. Go on the target. We'll get it. No! Oh. You wouldn't believe what happened then. The runner came out tonight and said, move down the ground. He just started to drop down the ground. And that's how he got onto that the ball. ball. Otherwise, came. he would have been staying back. I think the only thing that prevented Gail marking it was the sun right in his eyes. Very low in the sky this time of the afternoon. He's going to do the ruck work now against Madigan. Kick it. Oh. Reads it best. Beautifully played, Dale. Kick it. Right across goal. His target is Gary Durke. Oh, class. That was a brilliant mark. Knights and Allen now playing on the wing. Durke, who kicked their first goal this afternoon. Oh, Curry Gilbert. Phil Gilbert, the true centre-half back position. Tawny standing the mark. She's Gilbert out. looking for options. He goes in hard, Pete Gilbert. He does. Tough looking countenance. Burke in front. Out bustled by Mann. Well Muir. Muir. Shepard applied by Norris. Kickers up well inside 50. Hutton up one handed. Tape a chance. Prescott gives him support. Quickly over to Bond. Best and fairest from last year. Long looping hand pass. Kellaway from centre half back. Kellaway's kick up towards midfield. And a good mark has been taken down there by Nick Daffy. Play on calls the ump by now as Daffy in fact played on. He's looking down here for Rogers. The bounce important here. And the hand pass to Murillo. Well played by Madigan. Murillo. Off he goes to the kicker who has been terrific. Couldn't mark that one though. Oh. And Bauer it's a tried to kick it. <laughs> and it's a throw in. He had a fresh air shot. But Dale kick it. This is one of the best games I've seen Kicket play. He has been very, very good. Nine and six. Nine kicks, six handballs. Giving them a lot of drive. There's Daffy bringing it down towards the half forward line. Durke races at it. Oh, he leaves it for his teammate and kick it. On to Retzlaff. Retzlaff to centre wing. A one on one man. Oh. Excellent mark. What a mark. Is that 50? It should be. No, he's just taking him back on the mark a little bit, I think. Off he goes, Peter Mann. He brings it in long. He wants Hutton to take a mark. Oh, Hutton great make... kick. Uh, yes, well, that was there. That well, was Hutton, there. Hutton ducked back and got underneath his man. And he, no, the he, hand was on the shoulder. Yeah, I'm, about to, I'm about to say, Don, and the hand look, went look, round yeah. the neck. And a free kick to Hutton. So... Well, you missed... don't think your free kick was there? Yeah, the free kick was there, around the neck, Don. Let me say it, for goodness sake, as we see Hutton from 55 metres. And I backed him last time, Don. And I this he missed, and I'll back him for the distance at least. From 52, oh, right on 50, in fact. Hutton kicks it high oh. and wide. He certainly made the distance, all right. He's not kicking like he used to. So one... Definite free kick, resulting in one behind. 7-10 to 5-12. Punch away by Hutton that time. Well and truly clears it away from Cataway. It's out of bounds. Still in the Dockers' forward pocket. A right half forward flank. Ten points the difference in favour of the home side. Allen a chance. Neil there with him. Oh. Neil comes reeling out of the pack. Oh. Gee, they all went in hard there. Richmond. Like a 10 pin bowling alley. Richmond player down. That's Neil. Neil. He copped the worst of it. About four of them charged at the ball at the same time. And, and Mark they Neil. did not deviate. No. Ben Allen went in very hard. My word, he did. Umpire throws it up only metres from him. Oh, well, McManus went off the ground. In goes Prescott. Norris is in there. Dundas. They're bringing on the stretcher. Well, that's. I think a ploy more than anything else, isn't it? Is he that bad? Well, the Fred, the Doggers did it last week with White as a ploy. He came back five minutes later. And he came back and played a good game. Well, Here see, we watch this see. on replay. There's watch Neil. The he cops Hutton. Just in the chest. It didn't look like it was terribly high. Doggers making another change. Jay Burton coming back on. Groom off. I think he's okay, Mark Neal. I'm glad it was him, though, and not me, just the same. Let me say that. But I think it, it, it 
typifies the intensity that this game is being played at in the third quarter. Ten points the difference still in favour of Fremantle. They led 43 to 27 at half time. Richmond got that quick goal from a 50 metre penalty straight after the break to Gale. But the Dockers have still really fought it right out. A goal here would be pretty handy to the Dockers, wouldn't it? Just before three quarter time. Mark Neal, and that's, uh, and that's interesting here. They're carrying him off and they've left four water bottles on the ground. I hope that hope that's not a, a jaw injury. That's the important thing. Yeah. He's holding onto his face. So just hope that's not another broken jaw. Richmond have had a few of those. I know they've had a lot of injuries this year. I thought he got collected in the chest when we saw that replay. Marinda coming on now. I don't know what they're going Let's to do. Rogers again. is going down on the back line. Well, he's conscious. I don't think he's too bad. We certainly hope not, and Dwayne Lamb will bring us up to date. Rogers going condition. with Muir, and Marinda's gone down to the forward line. He's going to be picked up by Kickett. Let's hope he can come back. So the umpire has the football. It's Adrian Pinozzo. Now he's still waiting until they get the stretcher right off the ground. So a lengthy delay here. And finally play will continue. A chance for the Dockers. White, big leap, sets it up for Waters if he can gather the footy, looking for options. Dunness, a quick kick and the ball just travelling the required distance, I would suggest, for a Mark Bauer. Out to Prescott. Prescott at halfback. Muir stands the mark, has to go back. Prescott kicking from right halfback. Sun low in the sky, hard to mark these. No one can. And they all pile in to stack it up. We've got two minutes left before three-quarter time. I was just thinking about that 50-metre penalty earlier, and I just think the umpire is right because it was a deliberate trip, and they're paying the 50-metre for the deliberate trip and uh, with the hand, and that's the reason we've got that 50 metres. There's a kick from Retzlaff down towards Mann, who has been terrific. He's still got it. Well played, Peter Mann. He goes on with it to Waters, who has mucked around with the ball a lot. He's turned it over again on the Knights. A vital passage of play coming up, a good mark Look. by Brendan Gale in front of his eyes. The lead is on Marinda. Oh. No mark. Well, he took it a bit too easy. Taken by Kickett. And Kickett takes it over the line. Oh, hang on. You don't want to do that. Well, you can have that ball given to the opposition very, very easily. Madigan versus Brendan Gale. Just under one and a half minutes of play till three-quarter time and witnessing a very entertaining game. Here's a chance for Bauer. Now Miranda on the left back. Miranda oh. goes bang and puts it through for a good goal. Well played the Tigers. Mark well, Miranda has kicked his Yeah, first. you're right, Peter. It was a good passage of play. Gale in the ruck. And then Bauer is getting onto that hit out. The strength of Gale there. Here's Bauer. Quickly across to Miranda and the beautiful thing was a nice left footer so Mark Marinda getting the goal and this than a kick at it once more the difference is back to four points at Subiaco Marinda's first and still just the one multiple goal scorer in the match and that's Matthew Knights Tigers have put in a pretty good third quarter here they still haven't got the lead but you wouldn't write them off, as I said, just over a minute before the siren. A bounce up high, Burton. Hacked out of the pack to Burke. Still he goes, Burke. Oh, McManus had lined him up. Prescott down with the footy. Pinched by Broderick. Hutton gets cut and into. Ball underneath him. You'll have to get it out. Umpire says it's going to be another ball up. Doc has a chance to get a goal before three-quarter time and they would love one they led 43 to 27 at half time Mann who's been pretty good this afternoon Broderick Campbell out to Broderick holding the ball Richmond free kick going to Campbell coming in for his 20th kick eight marks as well and four handballs well really slowing it right down here he knows three-quarter time can't be too far away. Gale. He's Gale a great right focal centre point at centre-half forward, Gale. Kicked the goal earlier in the quarter. Bauer, have they got time? They haven't. Bauer 
It's going back to the kick. Oh, gee, need to be uh, Jeff Ferring or Dave McNamara <laughs> or somebody to kick it from there. Uh, off the side of the boot. Travels about 25 metres and a three-quarter time. It's Fremantle, 7-10-52, leading Richmond, 6-12-48. Earlier this afternoon at the Gabba, Hawthorne led by 45 points at three-quarter time. The Bears came back with one minute 30 to go. Scores were level. Very good overhead. Probing kick down towards the 50 and the mark is held in front by Fletcher. Courageous mark, determined mark. He'll kick from about 75 out. Hawthorne have to be very careful here. Work done to the ball was Graham. It bounces through for a goal. That should do it. How's that for celebrating your 100th game? It was the day the Bears buried the Hawks, 14-20, 104 to 14-13-97. We'll take a break.
and at Subiaco the final quarter Fremantle leading 7-10 to 6-12 the Dockers by four points they've led all day Norrish good tackle by Daffy knocked down to Campbell but there's a free kick throw kick it to take the kick and what he has done this afternoon has been pretty good Callahan Callahan had it right centre wing had a brilliant first quarter one on one marking to your man behind Durke slaps it forward past Abraham Bond's got it still Abraham in there applies a tackle is that Gale no it's uh, Campbell reeling out of the pack Abraham with Broderick and it's going to be a bounce the Dockers have got now McManus on half back flank he's picking up Tawny and O'Reilly moved to full forward I guess as a result of his fingers being taped he dislocated one in the third quarter Allen Stuart Neesham had a long talk to him at three quarter time Bond takes the ball out of bounds nothing for it crowd looking for a free kick so a throw in 70 metres from goal it's going to be man over the top Campbell he's opposite number nine hits it straight to Broderick play that the Tigers use so often in front Daffy couldn't complete the mark Ridley no options long looping hand pass over the top Callahan gets decked and he's going to get a free kick well, he's he, hurt his hand he's too hurt his hand he too could be a wrist did he get a kick in it I think no, he seems to be all right seems to be all right anyway Oh, no wonder the free kick was there now here's the ball at half forward for the Dockers Prescott caught they're working hard Callaway Campbell scoop that up and it could be a free kick which way is it going it's a holding decision going to Richmond and the Dockers aren't happy it's going to Bond here's Campbell good mark running back with a flight of the ball Wayne Campbell goes inside to Matthew Dundas Dundas on the left brings it around Taken by Callahan. Back it comes to Daffy. Daffy swoops on it and kicks it high. In towards full forward. Marinda at the back. Here's Morello. Doing it well. Oh, dangerous play. They're making a lot of skill errors now. Bauer. Did he have the ball? The umpire said he did. And he calls play on and now he'll come in and bounce. But some of the Dockers skill errors are causing problems. Well, of course, uh, cost them a goal. Only 15 metres out from Richmond's goal. The Tigers trailing by four points. Oh, Nash loves these. Snapshots oh. on the run. Beautiful goal. Nash has kicked it. Richmond in front. Well, he's done some great work, Gail. He did got a hit out before, which went to Bauer. And Bauer in turn to Miranda. It was a goal. On that occasion, he taps it down. Nash getting onto it. And as Peter said, he likes those snapshots. A real opportunity is Chris Nash. So the Tigers in front. Great goal by Nash. They need to get one quickly. Waters out of the centre for the Dockers. Richmond in front for the first time today. Nash's first goal. Man. Abraham. Lost it in the tackle to Broderick. Man. Back to Allen. He's a good long kick as a roll. And the skipper is pulled off of a miraculous goal. Great kick. Dockers back in front. Well, well, well. It's a pity. I'm just looking back the ground that Matthew Knights hasn't got a defensive side to his game because here's his man. Watch this. Nearly a turnover. Man doing well. Draws Allen. And there's Allen playing on centre wing against Matthew Knights. Well, we've got a ball game now. It's important whoever gets the ball out of the centre because nobody's coming in off the edge of the square. Fremantle by four points. Now, someone's going to go push off the ball here. Now, because Dundas is uh, playing very close, he's getting pushed away, and that's why the free kick was given. Nash. Dundas is wearing his man like a glove, and because of that pressure, he's being pushed out of contest. Now, here's Nash looking for Brendan Gale. Oh, it nearly snapped it. Still a chance. Broderick and kick it. Well played by kick it and Norris. Oh, they've handballed it. Oh, straight to Richmond again. Here's Phil Gilbert. He's got it. Oh, oh smothered. Campbell, well played. Campbell. Wayne Campbell. Fantastic. Oh, brilliant play by Campbell. Fantastic. 
Oh, oh that was just wow, like Karen what about, Jarman. What about the oh, smother? Oh, fantastic. Boy. It looked like they were going to take it away from the Dockers. And here it is. It's intense, this play here. Gilbert just maybe a little slow, but looking away was Campbell. Came in. The goals are there. Oh, terrific play. That's inspirational stuff. Richmond back in front, great smother by Campbell. He's had 21 kicks, five hand passes today, and that was one of the goals of the day. Man at half forward has got the mark. Well, I reckon he's best man on the ground, in my opinion. He's done well at centre half forward. Nine and nine, Excellent. six marks and one goal. I reckon he's played a great game. He's goal. just too strong here. Oh, it's said about the centre bounce, it's just so critical because guys are clearing it out because guys are not running off the edge of the square. And Burke just not big enough for man. Can he kick the goal to get the Dockers back in front? He's kicked something. It's a behind though. One Richmond behind. runner going out. I wonder where he's going. He's going straight to centre half back. One point talk, the difference. Talking to Broadwick, he's got a man up on Callaghan. 8-11 to 8 12. Anybody's game here. What a round of footy. Yes, great game. Great round. Great game of football here. A real pressure game. Chris Bond to bring it back in. The Fremantle runner talking to Phil Gilbert. And that's because he was far too casual taking that kick. And that's why it was smothered by Campbell. Here's our oh, Waters. Did that very, very well. Retzlaff was there. A quick kick. Benny Allen. Couldn't mark. Grabs Knights. Umpire calling play on now. Norris is there. Broderick to Campbell. Campbell a quick kick. And the mark has been taken by Madigan. It's important, Peter, the players are in front like Daffio. Campbell was under real pressure then, and Madigan in front of Gale, because a kick won't come as you expect. Here's Callahan. he chips it in short. Is that 50? No, it's not. It's Retzlaff taking the mark. He's almost on centre wing. So, goals very precious, precious at the moment, and not a lot of goals scored in this game. Here's O'Reilly. He couldn't mark. The ball hits the deck. Man is in after it again, and the umpire will come in and bounce, even though the Richmond players are... And the umpire's letting it go, too. That's, That's the way to do it. My word, it is. 19-15, the free game. kicks in favour of the Tigers. The difference is a point in favour of the Tigers. Getting the lead for the first time in the final quarter. Bond underneath, or the ball underneath him. Paul Broderick down on the tackle, and it will be a bounce. Plenty of time for both sides to really sew this up. And I don't think it's going to be a big margin in the end with only 16 goals scored so far in the match. 60 to 59 in favour of the Tigers. Man knocks it down, Callaway defensively to the boundary. Prescott and Durke. Prescott That's retakes better. his footing. Well done by the Tiger defender. Punch away by Ridley, good defence by the Dockers. Clears the zone, beats Prescott out of bounds. It will be thrown in on centre wing. Good play by Ridley. Charles warming up, stretching. About to come on. Deer from behind Burton. Well, Ridley might have given away a free kick in the back. He hasn't. Allen, quick kick up towards half forward. Muir in front. Did well, retained his footing likewise. On to Retz left. Great Terrific smother. smother. That came from Rogers. In he goes again, Rogers, to apply a tackle on Muir. Retz left's in there as well. And it's going to be a ball up right on the edge of the square. 8 11 to 8 12 in favour of Richmond. Neil's all right too, Peter. He's running around the boundary, stretching. Well, that's good news. Thank you, Don. Kick up towards from Bauer to Gale. Knights. Matty Knights at midfield. Just wide of the circle. Good long kick. Travels a good 55 metres. No mark taken. Nash lost it. And Ridley comes away with the football. Good play by Ridley. A very good kick. Finds Callahan. The loose man is there. Ben Allen. Some good shepherding by Norris. Allows Allen. Oh, Daisy cutting pass. What a great kick. That's his second of the game to Man. And Man has marked 60 metres from goal. I'll be looking maybe getting Jerika or, Jerika or a bigger guy down at full forward. Here's the kick O'Reilly at the back. Oh, he's got that sore hand. He tried to mark it one handed. Chris Bond oh. goes for oh. the line. And uh, the umpire says a throw in about 60 metres around from the Dockers' goal. Uh, Riley, I just wonder, protecting that hand 
whether he went for that, that's the reason he went for it one-handed in that contest. He could have dived and marked it. One point the margin. Richmond in front. Scott Waters dives over the top. And the up bar will come in and bounce it again. Plenty of time. Just under the 13 minutes left. And we see Greg Deere. Bell coming on. He's about to come on for the Dockers. Taking on Burton. Round the corner goes Retzlaff. But he's put it out high, wide and handsome and out on the full. And Ashley Prescott will bring it back in. Tawny's going to full forward for Richmond. Miranda coming up the ground, being picked up by McManus. Gale going down to the full forward line. Bond takes the mark at right half back. Best and fairest from last year for the Tigers. Bond's kicked the centre wing. One point the difference here at Serbiaco. Retzlaff quickly to Ridley. Good block by Kickett. Knights underneath it in front of Allen. The only two players on the ground who have scored more than one goal. Gee, that was an excellent kick by Knights. He held that ball across his body. Gaffey. Good vision to Campbell. I reckon just about best on the ground, Wayne Campbell. He's been excellent. And that smother and goal earlier in this quarter was fantastic. Now Nash, who is probably a better kick at goal from a snapshot, has got one already. A goal here would be real handy for Richmond. There's no one in the square at the moment. Not a soul. Well, Gale should be down there. Now he's going to make a move, I think, as he runs in, Gale. Nice. Right on 50. That looks pretty good. He's cleared it. It's there. Nice gets his second for the quarter. And the Tigers do start roaring now. 9-12 to 8-11. The difference out to seven points. It's good play. Knights holding the ball across the body. Got it across to Daffy. Daffy in turn to Campbell. Campbell to Nash. This was an excellent kick for goal by Nash. The Tigers by seven points, showing their normal fighting spirit as the quick kick by Dundas comes out towards the direction of kick it. Kick it. Tries to get his boot to it. But there are Tigers there. There are three of them as they swarm in. Just and so important, Peter, in a pressure game like this that you're in front because the ball's just not travelling any distance and, then, and they're not pinpointing their targets because of the pressure. Well, Richmond fight hard in every game I've seen them this year. They've really given knights. Knocks it on. McManus has Mc got it. They, they love the handball, as you can see here. On to Murillo. Murillo. Will he bounce it again? Oh, he ran a long way. Now he has a bounce. But what's he doing with it? He's now going to transfer play and kick straight to a Richmond man. Gee, that's poor play. Yeah, but you've got to keep that in the oh, Dockers. Oh, he should have kept going around this battery line. Here's Knights in front. No free kick. Taken by Kickett. Kick it wide. Find Benny Allen. Allen can run. He'll have another bounce. Some shepherding by Waters. Another bounce to Allen. He tries to do too much. He's caught. Oh, bad play the Dockers again. Prescott. Back it comes. Ridley could have given away a free kick. Now kick it. Kick it back to the centre. McManus a chance. Oh, he wants to run too. McManus has the bounce. He wants to handle. They're going to get away with it this time. Waters runs to 50. Scott Waters kicks a goal. And O'Reilly couldn't mark it. It's a point to the Fremantle Dockers. But a, a vital point because now the margin, one straight kick, six points. But gee, the Tigers going to be involved in another draw. Halfway through the final quarter, Richmond leading by a goal. Need to have a stout heart to follow Richmond, wouldn't you? Norris's hand pass, now it comes back to Muir from Burton. And that's a grab, no it's not, Durke kicks it out of the pack. O'Reilly, can he go off the ground? Miranda's got him, Retzlaff a chance. It will be a ball up. In the Dockers full forward area, 9-12 to 8-12. Richmond grabbing the lead in the final quarter for the first time today. Durkay's okay, got the cramp. Yes, he has, Peter. He's down. He's not much good on the ground. What has applied a tackle? First one was a little bit too high. There's his man running off and getting it. Oh, no, he won't get the ball. But Bowers kick out of bounds. They've got to get him off the ground. Standing on the boundary line is number 15, Winston Abraham, ready to come on. They'll have to get him off pretty quickly. He'll have to go straight over the boundary line, surely. Well, he can't come back if he does that. Yep. That's right. And they wouldn't want that in a tight situation here in the final quarter. Dundas lost it. Muir a chance. 
Slews off the side of the boot, out in front of goal. Hutton couldn't bring it down. Knights in everything. Hutton applies a tackle. Kicked off the ground by Bond. And that's out of bounds on the other side of the ground now with nine minutes left. Abraham is on. Haven't seen much of him today. Back into the side. Only had five possessions. Chance to do something in the final quarter. Rogers takes it over the boundary line again. And Durke getting that muscle massaged and stretched to try to get himself back into the fray. Mann and Burke. McMadison Dundas. Plenty of hair there. And another throw in. 9 12 to 8 12 here at Subiaco as the clock ticks down to the final quarter. So it's still anyone's game this. A goal to the uh, Dockers here. And scores will be level. Here's Mann. Look at him. He's been terrific on the left foot. They need someone to take a mark. O'Reilly is there. He couldn't mark. They dive in after it. O'Reilly. Bell. The Tigers charging. Chris Bond is there. Look at the pressure. And the umpire will come in and bounce again. Richmond by six points. The Fremantle Dockers battling hard. Richmond showing their normal tenacity. They fight everything out. Here's Callaway talking about fighting hard. Bell charges in. Prescott is there. And the umpire will throw the ball up again. So it's a real tight, hard, physical battle going on right now. Man again against David Burke. Norris is there with Miranda and finally the ball forced over the line. When they met in round one, it was five points the difference in favour of Richmond. Six points the difference in favour of the Tigers now. But plenty of time for both sides to take out the four points. Hutton knocks it down. Bell, well, oh, that's a threw throw. Oh, he threw that. Yeah, Cole Eager would have called that run from square leg. Bond with the free kick and with the sun in his eyes. In the back pocket for Richmond. Deer. Good play, Good knock on. Knights. Knights has kicked down towards half forward. Gale taken out of that contest and the football taken over the boundary line by Madigan. Gee, that was an excellent knock on by Greg Deer. He's coming off the ground. Charles about to come on. 70 metres from Richmond's goal. Gale and Jay Burton. Burton in front. Not as tall as his brother. Probably not as agile either. Madigan. White coming off for Fremantle. Bell Broderick. Broderick's kick up towards full forward. Gilbert at the back. Couldn't complete the mark. Daffy into the goal. And Tawny missed a golden opportunity to put a goal through for the well, Tigers. That's where I'd have a big man, Peter. Tawny in the, in the last bit. Your little fellows can't jump as high. And Gilbert got it down to the ground. If you had a big fellow like Jerika playing up there, at least he could take the mark. Well, it's a handy point because the margin is seven. And that's two kicks uh, the Dockers are going to need. They've got seven minutes. Here's Phil Gilbert. He's, I think he should be moving this ball quickly. He runs close to the man on the mark. A good kick, though, to centre winger. Oh, it's some tall Tigers there. They all tried to mark it against each other. McManus has been pretty quiet. On the Ridley. Here they go. They love to run. A big chance here. Will it sit for Betty Allen? No, it won't. Bauer is there. Campbell has been outstanding. Socket off the ground by Rogers. Miranda, he leads in the race for the ball, but there are two. That's a free kick, Miranda, surely in the back. It's not paid. Geez, they never give up, do they? They're an exciting team, the Dockers. They want to run, they'll chance their arm. And you've just got to keep at them, run them down. So it's on centre wing. Charles. Number 27 is Jay Burton for Fremantle. Justin Charles, former Footscray player and baseballer. Here's McManus. He's a good little player. Norris oh. goes to ground. Then he hooks it out. Dundas and Muir. Oh, Dundas is overrun. Tried to get it to the line and then Scott Waters helps us on, it, on its way. Well, still six minutes to go. Richmond leading by seven points. Just about many other games. You'd think the Dockers could pinch it, but scoring's been very, very difficult here this afternoon. It's not a bad lead. McManus over the top. Rexlaff, you'll have to be quick. Oh, oh he's right down. Terrific tackle from Bauer. Oh, look Hutton. at that. Gee, and that tackling is fantastic, isn't it? 
Prescott on the last line of defence for Richmond. Bowers cramped up too. Callaway in front. At the back is Campbell. Oh, went without it. Kick number... No. He's gone for the hand pass. That was intelligent play. 23 and 7, Wayne Campbell. And as well as that, he's taken 10 marks. So it's not a bad afternoon's work. Charles and Jay Burton. Miranda. Nash. Waters. The whole, the, the whole point is the Dockers just haven't got a good forward line. Mm. Apart from men, they haven't got anyone looks like getting a goal. We said that in the first quarter, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, they just lack key forwards. Well, they're only seven points behind. I well, know, but if they... If I think they, it might be a country mile, though, really. Still. Nick well Mattis, done, Campbell. Campbell. Desperate play. He's got it behind him in more ways than one. Boy, that was desperate. So five minutes now remaining in the match. The Dockers needing uh, two scoring shots to get level. It's going to be a ball up there on the outer side. Empire Pinozzo throwing it in the air. Ben Allen's gone to the half forward line. Knight's still with him. Nick Mattis across his body. Knights. Allen. And that's out of bounds once more. Well, a goal. Uh, if the Dockers can kick a quick goal, it'll be an interesting game at the moment. Richmond, you'd back them at seven points in front, but plenty of time, just under five minutes. Peter Mann. Oh, look at the knock on by Mann. Travels about 35 metres. Callaway has to defend. He's lying on the ball. Umpire calls play on. Shuffled out by Knights. Here's Ben Allen. He's got it. He breaks the tackle. Under the left boot goes Allen. Gee, Off the, the side tackle. of the boot. And once again, Richmond are over the mark. And then David Burke laid the tackle on Allen. So uh, Nathan Bauer has got the ball. Gone Burke short, he can have him. Oh, he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. David oh. Burke was by himself on the 50 metre line. And Ben Allen will be able to put this ball almost into the goal square. He is a long kick. I wonder if he'll go to the torpedo punt. He's, he is going to the torpedo punt. Oh, it's a beautiful long kick up the square. They need a mark. And got a force through from behind. Now that's interesting because scores are six points of difference in favour of Richmond. Richmond will kick it in, so big chance that we could even scores be level shortly. And the crowd coming to life again. Still four minutes left in this match. Will the Tigers figure it another draw? Odds would probably be against it. But what a round of football it's been. Charles! Good mark. Former Bulldog. Kicks from half back up towards midfield. Ridley in the box seat takes the mark. Oh, that's 50. Got to be 50. It is. Silly play by Bullis. He dragged him by the jumper. He'll have a shot at goal here, Pete. And scores could be level. Todd Ridley. Well, how good's this 50? Gee, it's not a bad 50, is it? That's about right. Let's see what happened here. Ridley the mark. Bullis drags him. Well, he didn't need to do it. No, he didn't need to do it. Anyway. What can Ridley do? He'll be kicking just inside 50. Distance shouldn't be a problem. Accuracy isn't a problem. Scores a level at Subiaco. Well, Richmond have got two of them. And they've got one, Fremantle. It's a disciplined play by Bullis. What and in a tight game such as this, you can't afford to do it. Scores locked away. Here's the mark. Ridley in front. Frustration by Bullis. Scores a level, and Bullis has been banished. Oh, here comes Madigan. The Dockers are lifting. Hutton, a free kick, Hutton. No, I it. thought he was held. Here's Tape. Tape goes for the boundary line. A good play by Jamie Tape. See, I don't know why they don't get Jerika on the ground. Up on that full forward line, they've got Bullis up there now. Scores a level, three and a half minutes to go. What a game. It's been that sort of game all day. Burton versus Charles. Charles jumps all over the top of Burton. Here's McManus. He goes to ground. He tries to lock it in. Bond is in there after him. Here's Muir. Well played by Muir. Broderick around the corner. Oh, danger for Richmond because Norris has got it. Norris bombs it. Peter Mann. <coughs> Can't mark. And there's a mark to young David Burke. Well, two tall dockers there as well. Burke, centering kick from him. Good vision. He's found Rogers. 
No one was in Cooey. Couple of bounces from Rogers. Here's the Tigers' chance to show up the match. Up towards full forward. And a big mark. The man who got banished. Bullis has taken the grab. 50 metres out from goal. Any score would put Richmond in front. It's good play by Charles. He's going down to the full forward line. Get down there. Now he's stopped. There's nobody in the square at all for Richmond. They need a big guy down there. It's taking plenty of time. Two and a half minutes remaining. Bullis. He's not the best kick in the world. Better known as a defender. Let's see what sort of a kick he is. Well, he can rectify his other mistake he here, can. can he? He looks a little nervous. As you would be. 48 out. Oh, funny old action. Kicks. The end it's result looks pretty good. It's a goal. Tigers in front. That was an excellent kick. An excellent kick from Bullis. He kicked it very high, Don, didn't he? It's, he's got an awkward style. He's not the best kick in the world, but he stood up and was counted. But boy, it's again to come back to the centre because Fremantle have got their side of the square open. Now it's important who gets a break here. Fremantle by six points. Richmond. Uh, Richmond by six points, I should say. Back it comes. Roderick. Oh, good play to Campbell. Campbell hooks it back. Nice a chance. Yes. Oh, I'd like to back Chris Nace from here. Gee, that centre break, the way they're playing the square today is just so important. So important because there's no pressure coming from the outside. Gilbert limping. So Chris Nace, who is a beautiful kick for goal, a chance to make life difficult for the Dockers. He runs in. 45 metres, he's hooked it. So now the Dockers... That's as good as a goal. The Dockers have got one and a half minutes and they have to score seven points at least. Can't do it. Oh, oh Peter, be hey, careful. Hey, be oh, careful. Oh. I just think the Tigers have got more to, yeah, more to oh, aim for. No, more no, to look, for. Here's a short man, they're away. Kicked away for the Dockers by Callahan. Oh. Kick it. Will they make me eat my words? Muir. Clock ticking down. They've got to get a goal here out oh, of this man holding. Hold. Oh, great oh, mark. Oh, man was holding Burke. No. Terrific mark. Won't get the distance with the kick. Look, holding again. No mark taken. Oh, Abraham. Nearly poleaxed there. And Richmond defender is descending on it very briskly. Too tired up. The clock will tick down and continue to tick down while this ball up is affected. And that's certainly helping the Tigers. They've got to get a goal here, Fremantle, and then take it down from the centre bounce. They can't do it. Burke over the head of McManus. Bounce is going to be a factor. Well Charles, done, Charles. Belts it out of bounds. The clock will stop, but I think time has run out for Fremantle. Richmond by seven points. They had their chance then on that breakaway, and they just couldn't do it. The Tigers fighting hard as they always do. They lead by seven. The Dockers would have to get a very, very quick goal now. It's a good hit out by Burton. They've got some sort of chance. Oh, good play by Campbell to save the day. To the centre of the ground. Kick it, put his body in front. Well played by da uh, Daffy. Back it comes the Dockers, still a chance. Retzlaff, onto the left as the time clock well, ticks the down. Holding. Should Some be against uh, Knights. Here's Campbell, he's been outstanding and he locks it in. Holding the ball. Gee, that was tough. 14 seconds, time is going to run out, I would think. But Ben Allen bombs it in long. Oh, they might get a like mark a here. Oh, he's dropped the sitter. Free kick. Free Sign kick. Oh. Time clock ticks down. They're going to be beaten by the time, but is it White with the free kick? He's on the boundary line. He'll probably play on here, and the siren Stop. about yes, to go. that's right. He wouldn't want to play on, but he will, I guess. There's the siren. So the Dockers have been beaten. Richmond have won. He can't play on. That's the end of the game. Yeah, end of the game. He played on the young kid. I think he might have actually threaded it through, but it won't be a score. So that is the end. Richmond have won. Final scores here. 10-14-74. The Tigers, another thriller that they've been involved in, defeating Fremantle, 9-13-67.
And what a round of football it's been. The big one at the MCG this afternoon, a huge crowd to see old rivals Collingwood and Carlton. And for the replay, let's go to Drew Morford. Yes, thank you, Peter, and have a safe trip home tonight. Well, what about that? The two interstate games today, both decided by seven points. Both thrillers. Let's have a look at the <laughs> Fremantle-Richmond sides now. 3 0 in a bit of trouble at the moment, too. They were belted last week by 44 points by Hawthorne. They've made wholesale changes. Let's look at the inside, at the ins and outs, rather. Muir, Abraham Bell, Waters, Jay Burton, Wera, Groom, Parker and Ridley. Jay Burton is in fact Jay Burton from Subiaco. He's the brother of Matthew who's been dropped to let him in. Burroughs is out injured with an ankle. Milden Hall is out with a back. Leach is a thigh. The Burton, the elder brother Burton is gone and so too is Wills. <laughs> oh, that's that's wrong with that. That's oh, wrong that. What's wrong with that? How long does it go? <laughs> We're another 12 weeks, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we'll get there, I reckon. All right. Yeah. Let's quickly move on to the Richmond side now and look at their ins and outs. And they they have a few changes there. There they are, somewhere up there. Swaggy <laughs> 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 Muters. It's one of your better performances. No, Daddy, that bloody office has gone to your head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put them back up. Knights, Miranda. Can we get them back up there? Yeah, I got it here. Look, Knights. <laughs> Murphy, I've got Howard, it here. Knights. Straight up Burke. M. Gale is out injured. Of course, he has a broken collarbone and is out for a fair while. And Maxfield has a broken jaw. Let's have a look at the team as it goes. Come on, get them up. <laughs> Richmond. Let's do him a laugh, eh? mm. Let's go. Uh, draw against this. <laughs> last week against this, isn't it? Tariqa kicked five. Brendan Gale kicked three. And last time they met, Richmond won by five points at the MCG. The coach, John Northey, said, I just thought it was an excellent effort by every player in the team to get a draw while uh, the Fremantle coach Stuart Nation wasn't too happy. What a huge test this will be for Richmond in the next few weeks. I mean, they've had a great run for the last two years with injuries, and now they've got a really... Who's going to win? Richmond. Richmond too good. Fremantle, Ed. Oh, it's Richmond. Oh, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and, Trev, before we go, uh, you tip these two sides, Fremantle and Richmond, to be traditional rivals. And yes, and here they are playing again, so I stand by my original statement. We're still on, are we? We're still going. The show hasn't ended, has No. <laughs> anyone know what's going on at No, all? we don't. We'll go to the break, and when we come back, we'll hopefully have some idea what the hell's going the on here. A great start to the uh, year, but they've now lost five in a row. Let's go over to Subiaco. Pete Landy's there, mm -hmm. along with Don Scott and Dwayne Lamb. And also important, Peter, for Richmond, because uh, they can't afford a slide. Well, they can't, Bruce, and with all the injuries they have, they just like to get out of this one, Scotty, with the four points, and that'd be it. But their record over here in Western Australia... Uh, uh, is also not good. Better team though, uh, Peter, than I've seen for a long time. They're playing with uh, that old-fashioned thing called passion, emotion. They're really involved and uh, I think they'll make mincemeat of the Dockers today. Well, it probably would. The, the record would suggest that the Dockers, uh, who have lost five straight, they haven't won over here since they beat Brisbane in round, uh, I think it was round nine. Uh, well, they've got a job ahead of them and uh, a debut on today, Jay Burton. Yes, the brother. Hmm. Be interesting to see how he measures up, won't it? But uh, I can tell you, Bruce, there won't be 90,000 here this afternoon. Scotty and I are here, and also the groundsmen are doing the lines <laughs> at the set. moment. Pete, it is early. Now, you are in Perth. <laughs> Change your watch. They'll come in. Sandy would love it over here, Bruce. There's nobody around. Sandy, you would have loved the river run today. There was nobody to annoy you. <laughs> Get the chocolate cake. It's a great thing, communication, isn't it, Don? <laughs> oh, hey, listen, you could learn a little bit about it, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, Speaking of uh, chocolate cake, I was going to introduce Fatty Lamb. Are you there, Fatty? He's here. Yeah, can you send some over, mate? I'm pretty hungry this morning. <laughs> Fatty, we'll talk all about Sue Biaco and their great form later on in the program. You just stay there. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break on hotel room there prior to the match. Tony, thanks for uh, go, coming on the program. How are you, Tony? I think he just can't hear us for the moment. Tony Free, Bruce McAvaney, mate, how are you? No, he's just not hearing me for the moment. OK, we'll catch up with Tony in a moment. Before we do that, we'll have a look at the history of the two clubs. They did play earlier this year, Fremantle and Richmond. Widely tipped to be the season seller dweller, Fremantle burst into the big league at the MCG in round one. Todd Ridley etched his name into the record books as the club's first goal scorer. And the experience of captain Ben Allen was evident. However, a skinny young beanpole called Matthew Burton leaned plenty of attention with his athletic style. Sits nicely for it, Ridley at right centre wing. The captain goes away, Ben Allen. Looked injured earlier, long kick from right on 50, terrific kick. That's a magnificent goal, but it's there, the umpire says, all clear. With Benny Gale on target, Richmond looked safe at three-quarter time. 
but five Docker goals almost allowed them to steal the game. Room again, it bounces, it bounces, it bounces, it bounces, it bounces. was the Tigers home by five points. Tony Free in Perth, when you look back at that match, it got Richmond off to a pretty shaky start, but a win's a win, and uh, you really went on with it from there. Yeah, we certainly did. Um, we got bagged a little bit, actually, for that game. We were expected to win by a little bit more, but it just showed that Fremantle Dockers, you know, we're a very good competitive side, I think. And Tony, just before the other guys ask you some questions, what was Richmond's preparation? When did you go over to Perth? Um, the main group came over Saturday morning, uh, had a little bit of lunch here, watched a movie, I think. There was a variety of movies they could choose from, then went to the ground at Subiaco and had a little bit of a walk around and a kick, and then basically a bit of a team meeting last night, and we'll have one, I think, at about 11 o'clock Perth time here today before they go off to the ground. Tony, Pete Landy out at Subi, everybody's talking about Richmond's long injury list. Just where are you at at the moment and how's your rehabilitation coming along? Rehabilitation's going very well actually. It's, um, the doctors and physios are quite excited about it. It's come up very good. I still won't be able to play finals football this year. I'll have to wait till next year, but it's going to be interesting. In about four weeks I'll be running around mad and I'm sure that I'll be very toey to play. So I'll be trying to negotiate, but I'm sure they won't let me. Tony, where has the improvement come as far as Richard's, Richmond is concerned? Because the guys have been playing together for a number of years and really haven't been impressive, but until this year they've really gone on with it. But uh, where do you consider the improvement? Oh, it's, a, it's a difficult question. I think we recruited a number of guys. You look at uh, Paul Broderick, Michael Gale, Greg Deere, a lot of very professional, experienced guys. And I think they just assisted the core group that we had. So we've got great leadership, I think, and a very professional sort of training attitude. And I think that's just you know, passed down through the younger guys. And now we've got a, an excellent um, team, I think. You can see with the injuries, we've had to bring up a number of younger guys and they've just stuck to the team plan. They've been very professional about it and subsequently, you know, we've played consistent football. Tony, Dwayne Lamb down here at the ground. How you you always look very comfortable, mate, sitting back in the lounge chair when you get these interviews. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know about that, mate. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, isn't it? You know, when you first started off, but um, I do enjoy it. It's good fun and, you know, you like to give, you know, a few of the supporters out there a bit of insight into the game. That's good. Tony, just a, uh, a point on, I suppose you've been tested with injuries to key personnel, a couple more last week. Mm. How is the depth in the club, you know, is it testing you now or, you know, can you afford to lose any more? Um, I don't think we'd like to lose a lot more. I went and watched the reserves game yesterday and um, Jamie Elliott played in it and played quite well. Justin Murphy, who's played a little bit of senior football, played quite well. Um, Stuart Edwards played in the reserves yesterday, so there's still a little bit there. And, um, I mean, years gone by, we couldn't really afford to lose one or two players but now you know we've got sort of six or seven out so it just shows that our depth and has really increased over the last year or so. Tony Jarrett Healy up in Queensland uh, just harking back on the events of the week following your game against Essendon from a player's perspective would, would you like to see uh, the club's site players uh, for incidents on the ground or do you think it should be left to uh, the judiciary or the trial by video umpires as it is at the moment? Personally, uh, I think it should be left to the AFL and the trial by video and umpires, but I mean it's interesting isn't it, if the umpires, you know, you've got so many there, if they can't pick up an incident, I think you look to the next game, there's always that payback thing which is a bit of a worry, so it's very important that the AFL and the umpires do see the incidents, do something about them so there's no incidents in the next game if you know what I mean. But from a club point of view I think we'd prefer just to leave it and leave the you know, judiciary do their job. Tone, uh, Sandy Roberts here with Jared up in Brisbane on a warm sunny day. Um, of course everyone's been talking about finals with Richmond for some time now. Has the talk changed at all in the past couple of weeks? Is there perhaps no... It's a four, it's a four sheep of the acre paddock, Jared. We haven't even finished that lunch yet. Uh, what's the talk like regarding finals for Richmond? Um, actually, John doesn't speak of finals that much. I think, you know, everybody realises that we'll play finals football, but with um, you know, the injuries and the couple of suspensions and things at the moment, I think we're just trying to stay focused, you know, on obviously this game today. We think that, you know, if we can finish up in that top three or so, then, you know, we've got a lot better opportunity to, to play well in the finals. You can afford to lose a game in the finals and still get another opportunity. So, um, you know, we're just really focusing on today's game. I think with a, with a bit of a young and experienced group, that's what you have to do. Tony, uh, there's seven uh, uh, players named on interchange. Are you privy to know who are the actual interchange players for today? You mentioned two Elliot and Murphy out. Yeah, um, well, I definitely know they played in the reserves yesterday. We've got, a team <laughs> <laughs> We've got a team meeting at 11 today, and I suppose it'll be definitely finalised then. Um, 
I know, I know David Burke's come back in and Mark Morenda's come back in and Matthew Knight's obviously who'll be a great inclusion as he didn't play last week so that should just give us a bit of a lift. Another one too is Chris Nace plays his 100th game today so that might give the players a bit of a boost as well I hope. Tony, good luck. We'll be watching it uh, around Australia on the Seven Network. We wish Richmond well. Thanks, Bruce. And thanks for giving us your time today, mate. No. Tony Free, the Richmond captain, still uh, rehabilitating after that knee injury. A break. Back with more right. on Richmond. Yes, thanks, Bruce. I think it's going to be a pretty good game if we go back to the first game of the year, Scotty. Five points in it. Richmond, uh, well, they slowed down in that last quarter. I did that match. And I think it set the Dockers up. They became pretty competitive. Yes, uh, actually, I was at the game too, Peter. And uh, I thought Richmond just... You know, just sat back in the trace a bit and allowed uh, Fremantle to come in because they just underestimated, as a lot of teams did in the early part, underestimated Fremantle, but they've worked them out now and I think it'll be a real... I, personally, I think it'll be a different story today. Their form, though, hasn't been good of late. They've lost their last five and they haven't won here since uh, they beat Brisbane in round nine. Their last win was at Waverley against St Kilda in round ten. Uh, how do you sum all that up? Well, I've watched them the last couple of weeks, and really what they do lack is real strength and some really class players. Last week, they had a couple of good players, and they're only small guys, though. Uh, McManus was very good, but he's been doubtful, though. He's been cleared of the thigh he injury. Uh, Callahan will uh, also play, and he was good. Started uh, forward pocket, then into the centre, and he picked up and played on Jarman in the centre. Picked up a lot of positions, and Madigan was solid, too, when he came and playing at centre-half back. But um, a few other Dockers now have really got to stand up. Maybe they haven't got the physical strength to see them right through a whole season, Pete. And this is going to be an interesting matchup. Matthew Knight back after injury. Ben Allen keen to do well. Well, he uh, would be after last week. Last week, Tony, Tony Woods uh, got the better of him. Well, he was dragged also, Peter, <laughs> and uh, you know, and that wasn't a happy day for Ben playing against Hawthorne last week. Now, Jerika, young up and comer in Tigerland, takes on one of the best playing uh, 50, uh, 50 games. Uh, Stephen O'Reilly. Well, Jerika is very, very strong for an 18-year-old, and uh, he's been a surprise pack at the last couple of weeks. Let's go down to Dwayne Lamb, and uh, an interesting debutant. Uh, Dwayne is Jay Burton. Uh, Jay, yeah, it's great to see from Subiaco. I normally play with him, and Spiders uh, wished him good luck, his brother, but uh, you know, he said did say break a leg, so I don't quite know what that means. <laughs> How do you think you'll go, Dwayne? Jay, um, I think he'll uh, be, be good. He'll be very competitive. Um, you know, he's stepping up, so it, it'll be a real test for him. Okay, real test for uh, Fremantle too this afternoon. The Tigers keen to do well and get the four points. I think it should be a pretty good game, Bruce. Looking forward to it, Peter. Thanks for that. Uh, Brisbane and... Nice first, is it, Bruce? <laughs> yes, go on, okay, Peter. Uh, Why not? I'll go for Carlton. Have to go for the Hawks. And uh, Richmond, well, they've lost six matches against uh, the Eagles over here in WA, but today I think they'll get the four points. Well, I've got to agree with you, Peter. The first time we've agreed all trip. That would, all year? All, <laughs> but just this trip. <laughs> Can we talk about your old team? Well, actually, I thought we'd get Wayne to talk about my old team because you played against them last week. Are they better than the side that won the flag in 93? I think uh, they're so on they're the, not, they're because on the... there's one notable absentee. Oh, well, I think they need Bomber Thompson and uh, Mark Harvey back as well. But last, last week's game, mm -hmm. I was talking to Shaw before the show, was the best game I've ever played in, and the emotion was just incredible. Yes, yeah. what was that? Benny Gale, he was on the subject of that, very emotional. Well, actually, he's asked me to publicly apologise for him because if anyone saw the interview after the game, he was quite emotional with Dipper, and uh, he's been hassled by supporters all week, and he, he just wants to say that he is sorry. And what he did he do? Uh, he just... He, he was very uh, it's just a bit and he, and he said, "I don't, um, don't worry about the supporters. You know, we're upset enough." And I mean, Benny's a—he's not that sort of fella. He, no, was, you know, well, he would care about the supporters and does that all is that fine. Sort of stuff. And, all yeah, settled. Yeah, I think you've even that up now. Yeah, yeah, just to yeah, settle. Yeah. Well, and you're heading off to Frio tomorrow to play yeah. against the uh, Dockers at the weekend. How do you think you'll go? Oh, hopefully we'll win. Too. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We uh, big move to go over there, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. We Pack fly out nine o'clock in the morning, yeah. and uh, we played them first game of the year, and it was very interesting because we only won by five points, and a lot of people bagged us and said we weren't very good. But it, you know, Fremantle since then have proved a lot. And of And your wrong. training, like Collingwood's, has been a bit different this week, hasn't it, Wayne? Monday night at the tennis centre with the tennis players. Wednesday night at the uh, state hockey centre, the mm. hockey players. Tonight at Olympic Park with the dogs. Swimming. Oh, the, the dogs. dogs. Oh, the dogs. Well, I think that's a danger game for Richmond. I really yeah. do. The travel over yeah. there and after that great... I, I believe that was the best game I have seen last Friday night at the Richmond Essendon game. And after that game, I think it could be a bit of a letdown for the uh, Tigers. And you still think Gavin Wanganin should have been changed? No doubt. Yeah, sure. Fremantle across the Nullarbor. 
can they muster enough ammunition to seriously consider knocking off Richmond and Roscoe? Oh, I don't think so uh, today, Rex. No, I think their team, uh, whilst they, they've played well in halves, Rex, predominantly the first half, they tend to fall away. Yeah. And some of their, uh, whilst players like McManus and co are stepping up, some of the more experienced players are just struggling. But if, and if Mann doesn't play, yep. he's been very steady for them. One Is of the few Jay players... Burton bigger than M. Burton? Uh, no, but he's actually a very good player. Is he? Uh, in fact, I think he might be a better player than his brother. Played uh, yeah. in reserves. Did he? Hmm. Huh. So uh, a real, uh, a real problem. Forward to seeing Winston Abraham, who's kicked 13 goals in his five games this year, and also throw in Callahan from last week because he was a good player. Good little rover. Yes, mm. playing up forward pocket. He played in the centre. Uh, played on German. They play a little bit wide of one another, but uh, he picked up a lot of possessions. And it will also be interesting to see Burton coming in, the yep. younger brother. The Rock Jewels, yes. Uh, they'll take on Greg D. I say they, because he'll probably do a bit of waxing with Jeff White. They might come off the bench together. Waxing? I haven't heard that since kick Good expression, kick. isn't it? I haven't heard that from school, though, Peter. Waxing at school <laughs> and share the kick. Why didn't so, well, you've got a kick. <laughs> <laughs> but Richmond are a good side, and I expect them to win because... Um, they're playing with a lot of enthusiasm, they're, a very, they're, they're, they're up and they've got their sights set on the finals and they're playing confident. They know how to win now. What about uh, one of the jewels of the day, I think, Jurika and O'Reilly? It'll be a good test of strength if they play on one another. Riley's been playing up the ground and also playing it forward on a number of occasions, but Jurika is only 18 but he has unbelievable body strength. Thank you, Donald. That's all right, Peter. <laughs> OK, Sandy, I think it's going to be a beauty. There was only five points the difference last time these two sides met, and uh, Fremantle, I think they'll toss everything at the Tigers early. The first quarter, very important. Yes, thank you, boys, from Subiaco. All that action coming your way a little bit later on. Fremantle up against Richmond. And tonight, the Dockers led for most of the game, but lost to Richmond. Just a goal in it. Peter Donigan sums up the day. And the late game at Subiaco Oval was also a thriller Very with the Fremantle Dockers holding sway for most of the afternoon. Into an open goal and kicks it. Before Richmond came home with a wet sail a after trailing at the first three Campbell changes. Up. On the left back, Miranda oh. goes bang. A superb individual oh. effort by Wayne Campbell oh. gave the Tigers the lead in a seesawing last quarter. The Dockers levelled after Bullis gave away a foolish 50 metre penalty, but he redeemed himself quickly with what proved to be the winning goal with two minutes remaining, the Tigers scoring their first win in a month. The end result looks pretty good, it's a goal! After 16 rounds, Carlton is a game and a half clear at the top of the ladder from Richmond, then the Cats and the Bombers. Footscray and Melbourne are looking safer in the...